All right, guys, we are here with my new cult leader. Oh, my. <laughs> Dr. Anthony Chafee. <laughs> that was an epic. I don't know how long it went for. A couple of hours, hours, I think. Two and a half, two and a half wow, hours. that's the longest pod we've done in a long time. I fucking And really there's a reason that. it went yeah. so long. It was fucking incredible. And as a five-year vegetarian, talking to someone about carnivore diet and diet in general, it was fucking incredible. Um, so, yeah, what, <laughs> if you can remember <laughs> you can everything. Remember, yeah. What do we talk about? Point. Well, we, we talked about, you know, just the benefits of a carnivore diet, some of the myths that people would say, like, well, that's going to be bad for you, not sustainable. We talked about the different uh, plant toxins and chemicals that yeah. people don't really recognize are inherent in all plants, even like good natural whole food vegetables mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of the science behind that. Um, we spoke about, you know, briefly on the environmental impacts and the ethical side of things, which you could you probably spend a lot more time on as mm-hmm. well. And I think I think deserve a lot of time because it's a, it's a serious issue. And um, and uh, you went went uh, from everything from ancient Rome, health to ancient Rome, yeah. and uh, yeah, to some to some good Samaritan work in Bangladesh. And oh. basically, we're going to call this episode "Fuck Plants." Yeah, yeah. plants are trying to kill plants you. Plants are trying to kill you, mate. It was fucking incredible. Um, really yeah. appreciate uh, you coming on. And really, really. I think yeah. all of the listeners are going to. Actually, this is yeah. going to be fire, I think. Yeah, very good. Um, we do have a Patreon to thank. Uh, yeah, it's Ricky Bobby. It is Ricky yeah. Bobby. I didn't realise <laughs> it was Ricky Bobby. So I so. don't know if that's your real name, but thanks, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby. Thank you so much. I don't know what to do with my hands he's this a, episode. He's a $10 Patreon member, so you're going to get some good benefits and some shows and tickets and extra content that is provided to all of our Patreon yeah. members. So. But for now, let's get hard. Let's get hard. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Welcome to Hard Yarns Podcast. I am fucking fat. (laughs) (laughs) Anything Chris White says, please (laughs) disregard it. 5D is actually a state of being. It's a unity consciousness. That was Hard Yarns with me, Frankie Rose. So I'm going to throw it over to your co-host. Daniel Delby. And Cameron Brand. I would do this and then I'd gong. (laughs) (laughs) Free in attendance for the millions listening at home. Let's get hard. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so we just begin. So um, thanks for coming on. Uh, give us a, a, a bit of a brief rundown of who you are and what yeah. your sort of uh, expertise is. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for having me on, guys. It's, yeah. a, it's so a pleasure. Excited. Yeah, so um, yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Anthony Chafee. I'm an American doctor. I moved here to Australia about four years ago. And I'm currently working as a neurosurgical registrar at uh, Sir Charles Gardner Hospital and and the affiliated hospitals with neurosurgery. But I've always had a deep appreciation and interest in diet and nutrition and how that affects health and chronic disease and performance. I've been looking at nutrition since I was a kid. That was instilled in me very early. My parents were very, uh, you know, they they instilled in us, um, you know, the idea that, that food matters that you should really, you know, eat what's right for your body. You don't want to. You want to think decades ahead. You don't want to be eating things now that are going to hurt you later and yeah. get heart disease and all these sorts of things. Are you sure you're American? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't yeah. sound like yeah. an American family yeah. value, so that's great. Yeah, yeah, not anymore. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but that was the thing too. You know, back in the '80s, there was this big push that you know fat was bad and everything. My dad did. Uh, the Pritikin sort of diet, which was, yeah. you know, you got rid of, you, know, you didn't really do any processed foods, you didn't do any sugar, but you also didn't do any fat. Mm. You could still eat meat, but you just would like boil ground beef and get all the fat and skim it off the top and things like that. Mm. So Pritikin got it right on, on the sugar and the processed garbage and all that sort of stuff, but I think he, he missed it on the fat. So we were raised like that. It was just like everything, like wheat, shredded wheat and those horrible yeah. things when yeah. I was a kid. Flavor. Lots yeah, of processed exactly. foods <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which part of America was it? Uh, I grew up in Southern California, okay, sort of cool. in the Santa Barbara area. Yeah. I guess that's, uh, and you can definitely speak more to this than me, but this is something I've spoken about a few times, is that those initial studies were pretty biased yeah. and funded by the, the very <laughs> the, yeah. the, the sugar industry themselves. So yeah. uh, maybe you can talk more about that. But um, from my brief understanding is it really became part of the zeitgeist when Eisenhower um, had a heart attack and then they decided to really start looking into it, uh, like, obviously heart conditions and cardiovascular and those sorts of issues but yeah, yeah uh, maybe go down that path yeah well that's exactly right so heart disease was it was a little known uh issue before yeah. that it, it was it was not something that was in the normal lexicon in, in america or around the world it's certainly not in uh for doctors even then when uh the american president eisenhower had a heart attack there were headlines and you can, you can actually look these up and it says what is this new heart disease you know, yeah. doctors baffled about this heart disease you know? covid 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like it was a new thing and people were trying to figure out what, what the hell was going on. So there was a lot of people looking at it. it was, so what does that tell you? That tells you that it was not a problem before that. Mm. It was not something that was a big prevalent issue. And everyone before that was actually really was trying to eat butter. They were trying to eat lard. They were you know cooking with lard. They were eating a lot of meat. They were the the you know, the, the idea was to try to get enough fat and enough meat, and we had no heart disease, you yeah. know. And, and as one uh, doctor and scientist pointed out when everything was so, they started blaming uh, fat and meat on everything, they said, how, we've been eating fatty meat forever, yeah. you know. And if you look at the fossil record and you look at, like, the stable isotope studies and things like that, we really have been. And, you know, how can an ancient diet cause a new disease? Because it really was a new disease. Yeah. So, they were looking at it, and there were sort of two camps. There were people that saw that the the increase in refined sugar uh, perfectly tracked the increased prevalence of, of heart disease mm -hmm. in, the, wow. in the 20th century. And then uh, the sugar company sort of got wind of this. And there's actually documents, there are internal memos that they're speaking about this, where they say, hey, look, there's this, this sort of uh, research going out. We need to protect our interests, so we need to put out sort of position research, which is a normal thing in industry. I think yeah. um, Coca-Cola funds most of the nutritional research at the university level Still? today. Today. What? Yeah. They spend, they spend that 11, incredible. they spend 11 times, Coca-Cola, just Coca-Cola spends 11 times more in research for nutritional research than the NIH. Wow. Right? Fuck. So, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> so, <laughs> What? Wow. Yeah. So I mean, you, you see, it's like, well, this study says this, and this study says this. Like, yeah, who paid for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? It's one of the biggest things that I've I've always looked into first is who's funded this study because yeah. you, you do know there's a bit of a bias behind it, and they're they're going to cherry pick some of the data, and this yeah. study suits my narrative. This How do you know which push. studies to even trust? Well, you know? mm. and, and that's the thing you don't you don't always know who funded it. Yeah. And and in the sort of 50s, 60s, 70s, the opposition research that the sugar companies were putting out. They actually didn't disclose yeah. that they were funded by the sugar company, which is which is illegal and in, un, and unethical. So, uh, but that has since come out, and so the journal, uh, well, so the University of California, San Francisco Medical School, which is which is a top ten medical school in yeah. the, in the world, mm -hmm. uh, and a top ten research institution in the world, they published in JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, which is a top medical uh, journal in the world, in 2016 actual internal memos from the sugar companies back in like the 60s. Oh, they published it like, wow, yeah. that's incredible. So, so you know how we had the, you know, the, the tobacco yeah. memos and things like <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 30 years, yeah. oh, no, 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 there's no, there's no yeah. research. Our, our research says that this is, this yeah. is all fine. Our long distance runners love Marlboro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nine, out of, uh, Nine out of 10 doctors yeah, yeah. choose camel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. That, that was an actual ad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. yeah, and so you know it's the same thing. Right? Yeah, and um, so now we have have the sugar memos. Yeah, right? so they're they're actual internal memos, their own internal communications detailing how they paid off three Harvard professors to falsify data and publish fraudulent studies to make it appear as if cholesterol caused heart disease, uh, and to exonerate sugar and say that it was totally safe. Fuck. Wow. One of those professors was named head of the USDA. And it was he who authored and published the 1977 USDA declaration saying that cholesterol caused heart disease, saturated fat increases cholesterol, stop eating both Wow! for the sake of your life. And, that, and it changed the entire uh, would have? Who would have thought who a professor th was <laughs> the first ever sugar baby? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, who would have thought profit drove people's uh, motives? Actually, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's the thing too. You think about, think about the profits, right? Yeah. So mm. how, how much do you think they got paid? It must have been a lot, the right? Professor to sell that sugar about integrity. You know, I mean, they're tenured professors at Harvard. They're top tier researchers. Probably fuck all, or yeah. was it a lot? Sixty five hundred dollars. Wow. Which, which today is the equivalent of fifty five thousand dollars US. <laughs> That's it. Oh <laughs> wow. That's what their souls were worth. Now, there's going to get a, a bit more than that because you know a lot of a lot of these professors derive their income from the research they do because. The, when you get a research grant, you know, you get some, uh, several million dollars for a research grant. Part of that is your salary. Yeah. You know, and say, well, this is how much this is going to cost me to do this research because I got to hire these guys, I got to pay them this, and obviously I need to pay myself that. Mm. And, uh, and half of that goes to the institution. That's why universities like re uh, doctors or, or um, professors that do research yeah. because depending on the institution, the institution just off the top takes 40 to 50% of that. And so when you're... When you're structuring your 
you know, a grant request yeah. with a you know charity or you know you know sugar industry or whatever, you're you're basically just doubling what you need because the school gets half of that. Yeah. And so so that's the thing. So they were they were funding a lot of these fake research papers and they were paying for it, you know? So like part of that, that those research grants from the sugar companies were going to pay them. So they, they ended up making more money than that. But the initial contract to say, hey, you know, do you want to make a deal with the devil? Mm. was $6,500. Fuck. That's it. Yeah. It's nuts. That's, yeah that's and that still happens today in all industries, surely. It, it, it must. It's, yeah. it's not supposed to. You're supposed to declare your conflicts of interest and where you're getting this money from. So that is actually absolutely uh, out of bounds, yeah. what they did there. Um, the, the sugar companies are still funding research. Most of it, you know, you can track it down. Mm -hmm. But it, w it wouldn't be apparent just on, on the face of it. Like, you would have to do some digging. Well, yep. after that Fauci clip we saw, he doesn't have to disclose who's, who pays him. Oh, his royalties for the, the royalties. <coughs> so there's some form of that in different aspects. It's all law, law, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, I hate uh, when it comes down to the technicalities of like, well, technically, I don't have to tell you this, or technically that. And, yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, so on that, I guess there. Do you have lobbying not only with, I guess, the sugar industry, like within, like, so this carnivore diet that you're pretty fond of, and obviously. It, not, it doesn't look like it's working for you very well. <laughs> <laughs> the sky is beautiful. People that are listening. Um, <laughs> nice tan, shredded. So there must be uh, lobbying in other sort of fields that sort of push against this carnivore diet. And, and want, I guess th there's probably um, a big push within the meat industry. Yeah, um, well, you'd, you'd hope so. But the problem with the meat industry is, it, is it's very disseminated. You know, there's not like... It's not like Nestle, you know, it's just yeah. this massive multinational, you know, multi-trillion dollar a year industry or Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, all these sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, they are all plant-based companies. I mean, they'll, they'll use meat as well, but the vast majority of their profits come from, from plant products, mm -hmm. Sh you know, sugar being, being a key yeah. portion of that. You know, I, I think... So are you saying vegans are unhealthy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, but you, you have, twist it. You, well, you have to sort of think about it, though. You know, what is vegan? Vegan just means absence of meat, right? Yeah. So, so Oreo cookies and heroin are vegan. Fuck yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. yeah. And this is why That's an you, awesome could, diet. <laughs> you could live off cheese pizza and say yeah, you're, you're not, not even yeah, vegan cheese pizza, and yeah, yeah say you're a uh, yeah. you're a vegan, but yeah, well, that's it's it, as unhealthy know. as fuck. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But that would be the, the case <laughs> with anything, obviously. Yeah. So you know, it, it really it really does matter. You know, the, the the specifics, right? So there are yeah. people that go on a vegan diet, and as compared to a standard diet with a bunch of processed garbage, they go to Whole Foods, they really make an effort. They work with a dietitian to really try to cover their 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 macros and micros to really get the most out of it. And they have to supplement because you cannot get a basic complement of nutrition mm. from a vegan diet. They su simply don't exist. You can't get B12, D3, K2. You'll never get enough vitamin A because you'd have to eat uh, three kilos of carrots a day to get enough vitamin <laughs> A. Um, and you never get all the essential fatty acids. You can get protein. I mean, that's the thing, too. That It's a bit of a straw man um, that people say, like, oh, well, you say you can't get enough protein here, but, you know, you know, uh, but you can't. You actually mm. can. It's just not as bioavailable. It's not as... as I was about um, to say the bioavailability is a big factor, right? Because yeah. you can uh, absorb it far better through the meat consumption. You can, yeah. And so the thing is, is that, that plants don't actually want you to eat them, funny enough. That's what mm. I've heard, and, yeah. You know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Cows don't want you to eat them either. That's why. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I don't think anything <laughs> wants you to eat them, <laughs> yeah, apart from my ex-girlfriend. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but does like stuff like fruit Most because girlfriend. it's, it's <laughs> tasty, yeah. uh, like tasty, sugary that flavor? Is that something they want you to eat because the, then you um, excrete their seeds into the ground and and then yeah. it, it re well they uh, want populates something. Them? They want something to eat. Yeah. You know? And so yeah, nothing wants to be eaten. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Maybe a lemming. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, you know, but th so everything has a defense is the main thing, mm. right? And so, so a cow's defense is by being a big, massive, strong animal that can kick and stomp you to death and yeah. stab you with its horns. Also bogans. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. <laughs> well, this is something Chris Primod said mentioned last when he was on. He was talking, and he's not an expert, so we didn't dive too much into it, but defense chemicals within mm. vegetables themselves. Yeah. Uh, before we go into the carnivore diet itself, like, can you yeah, do you know much about the defense else. chemicals and what, yeah. what sort of damages yeah. they can do to us? That was, that was the entire reason I stopped eating plants wow. 23 years ago. Okay. And I was taking cancer biology uh, at the University of Washington in Seattle, my undergrad. And 
we learn. How old are you? You look like 25. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like 23 years and ago. 23 when I was years. <laughs> yeah. Still, wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. I just turned 43. Wow. You, this, I, I'm fucking turning I'm, carnival I am today. Going carnival. <laughs> 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 Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, yep. Yeah. So, when I was, when I was doing my undergrad, um, took cancer biology, and, you know, and I, I, you know, I'd already studied botany, I'd already studied biology. Literally in seventh grade, I learned that Plants and animals are an evolutionary arms race. Plants becoming more and more poisonous, so less and less animals can eat them so they can survive and thrive. And then animals becoming more and more adapted to specific poisons in specific plants so they can break them those poisons down yeah. safely and detoxify them and get the nutrients out of it as well so they can survive and thrive. And that's their evolutionary niche. This is why even animals that exclusively eat plants, they eat very specific plants, Yeah. right? And so like a koala eats eucalyptus. Like yeah. nothing else eats eucalyptus, right? Yeah. But a koala doesn't eat anything else yeah. because it has the defenses for eucalyptus. It does not have the defenses for spinach and broccoli. It can't eat those things. Yeah. And, and so, you know, that that's how that works. And so if your species hasn't evolved to eat a specific plant, that plant is bad for you to varying degrees. We have some defenses, uh, but we don't have we don't have perfect defenses. And and the other th way that that plants defend themselves is um, is by making those nutrients not bioavailable. They're mm -hmm. bound up in different chemical bonds that we don't have the enzymes to break apart and split out and, and take out, right? Mm. And so, you know, you can, oh, there's tons of iron in spinach. You can't get it, mm. you know, maybe you'll get a bit of it, you know, but you're, you're not getting much of it. And uh, Well, that was my, uh, I just had my bloods, all my bloods taken prior to uh, finishing vegetarian for five mm. years. And that was the one factor. Everything else was really good because I was vegetarian, not vegan. So, you're not iron so my B twelves and all that stuff was pretty good. <laughs> I was getting that through my dairy, but um, yeah. <coughs> my iron was still in the good level because I still had a lot of spinach, broccoli, those sorts of things. But it was still on the he how he described it was on the low end of good. The mini Tony Stark, no iron in yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, but so um, with the spinach thing, there was just an outbreak of hallucinogenic spinach. Yeah. Is that is that got something to do with their chemical defenses, or did ah. somebody spray the spinach and fuck that up? Do you know I, what I happened saw, there? I saw a headline. I I, I didn't read too yeah. much into it, but you know you do have to recognize that in, in America. I don't know the exact stats here, but I, I assume they're similar in Australia. In America, ninety eight point five percent of food poisoning cases are through produce. Wow. Right? Yeah, because of insecticides. Well, no, no, because like. Well, look, you know, you're out in the middle of a field that's six miles long and you're just picking this stuff and you're getting paid by the weight that you're picking this stuff. Yeah. you got to relieve yourself. You're not walking <laughs> three miles back. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so you're just, you're, you're just, just defecating, true. urinating there. I used to work in a nursery and it's yeah. definitely <laughs> true. <laughs> you know, and you're not washing your hands and you're going to pick pick someone else's yeah. lettuce and you just keep going. So you, you get a coli on some lettuce, you bleach that stuff. It's not coming out. Mm. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter how much you spin it in your little salad spinner, you know, like oh. you're not getting that off. And I've so never even thought of it that way. Yeah, hey. yeah, well, <laughs> you know. And I'm, and I'm interested in the, in regards to the pesticides and the chemicals. Mm. Obviously, that's, is. I don't know if we uh, manipulate the vegetables themselves to be resistant to them at all or whatever, but uh, surely they're playing a factor in, what we're, we're ingesting them. Yeah, but but that's also a bit of a red herring as well because people will say, like, well, oh, the vegetables are all great. We're living in, you know, God's Eden. And uh, so, obviously, we're just everything's here for us. That's mm -hmm. not the case. Um, there was there was research in out of UC Berkeley in the 1980s. So, in 1989, Professor uh, Bruce Ames published a big paper talking about the natural toxins in and pesticides in plants, right? Because they, like, they're stopping plants and animal or plants and, and insects from eating them. So they have natural pesticides, natural insecticides. You can think of them that way. That way. And he found that there were that 99.99% of the pesticides and insecticides were actually inherent in the plant itself. They made them themselves. Oh, wow. So what does that mean? That means that 10,000 times more naturally <coughs> occurring poisons in the plants than the pesticides we spray on them by weight, and that the naturally occurring pesticides were far more likely to cause harm and things like cancer mm. than in, in lab mice, obviously, that is how they were testing this, um, than, than the pesticides they were spraying it against. So they looked at mushrooms, mm -hmm. um, and they were comparing this against ALAR, which is they were they're actually trying to ban this. Is What's why an this ALAR? ALAR is a, is a pesticide, especially they used in apples. It was, it would, it would, the pesticide also helped them ripen, okay. and so it was, it was used in... Um, 
you know, in that industry, and they're trying to ban it. They're trying to get rid of it. And, um, you know, he was just sort of pointing out, it's like, you know, guys, we, we've been using these chemicals for decades. Mm. You know, why, why were they causing a problem now? You yeah. know, they didn't 80 years ago when we were using 10 times the amount that we are now. Yeah. And, um, and so, he, you know, he did the stu- studies, and he looked at it, and he found that there was 10,000 times more naturally occurring toxins uh, than the ALR, and that my mushrooms were 500 times more likely to cause cancer than ALR. In, oh. the, in the rat, in, so the, in the rat. So tragic so mushrooms, not wow. magic ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just as the boring normal. Yeah. Thing, yeah. And I guess because um, yeah. I think we've seen uh, studies show that like on the the plants can communicate from one side of a field to another. Yeah. And I don't know what the science behind no, that that's is. That's a movie. That's the happening. <laughs> <laughs> do, yeah. you know, do you know <laughs> the science behind this? Or? A bit of it. Yeah. So th- so they can they can communicate in a number of different ways. You know, they, they send off chemical signals that that uh, the other other plants can can pick up, and they send specific signals depending on what's happening. You that's know? So, so insane. And they, and they obviously find that they, they vibrate in a certain frequency as well that we can't hear, but you can actually measure. And so uh, when they would sort of dry out plants, whatever, they'd send out a certain frequency saying, like, I'm dry as hell, I need help. (laughs) That's usually a text message from my ex as well. (laughs) (laughs) And and so that's one way that they can communicate. Well, those are three ways they can communicate that I know of broadly. Uh, They can send off chemical signals. So if you start cutting them or, like, an insect starts eating uh, a certain plant, they'll start sending off chemicals and they'll start producing more toxins specific to that yeah. insect, right? Because mm-hmm. they can tell by the by the frequency and the vibration of that of the chewing, which is pretty crazy. It's awesome. Um, and they can send off a specific signal to the rest of the plants, and those other plants start making more toxins against like aphids or something like that. Yeah. Like, oh Christ, they're back again. Yeah, okay, yeah, we'll yeah. make more of these things. Yeah, you know, because they don't have just things just running all the time, right? I mean, you're not you're not going to be producing all the things to detoxify. Mm different poisons if you're not encountering that poison your yeah. body might if you're counting it every day you might sort of build up yeah a resistance but you know if you're just coming into something it's like oh, okay now we got to do this and kind of like us with maybe insulin straight after we eat something our body yeah. will produce it so like the plants well, that, well that, that's actually a very good uh example because if you don't if you don't eat carbohydrates for a very long time you don't produce a, a body of, of insulin to g- be ready for yeah. that next hit of carbs, right? So that's why people say that if you go keto, you actually get insulin resistance. Total garbage. Mm. It's that that's again, it's all these studies. You know, what does the studies show? You know, it's it, it you know, it, it they can conclude whatever they want. It doesn't actually mean it's true. Yeah. And so what that study was is they looked at the, your your glucose tolerance, like they just they threw them a, a can of soda, and then they look at their glucose and their blood sugar, and all oh, it goes way up. Oh, it's because they're insulin. Resistant. Well, there are other things that can actually do that besides insulin resistance. Yeah. And one of them is, is they, they haven't preloaded their insulin, right? So, in fact, they're actually more sensitive to insulin because, you know, they haven't built up this resistance. Yeah. It's just it takes a bit of time for them to produce that insulin. Whereas if you do that for a couple of days, their body goes, okay, this yeah. idiot's eating carbs again. And so you actually start preloading insulin. Yeah. And then when you eat, eat uh, carbs or drink that soda, it just, bam slams it down yeah. right so sorry yeah so we got from aphids we're, we're protecting um yeah 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 and so 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 they do that so all these other animal uh, all these other plants will start start producing more more poisons against the aphids or whatever and then like you know uh, locusts come in and they'll start doing that with locusts different chemical signal different uh chemical and uh, then defense and then we ingest these these plants as well so Potentially, normally we, we wouldn't mm. be ingesting that, and then they've produced this because of this one moment, and then we're not used to it. Is is that sort of what's happening a bit? So, so there's always going to be toxins in there, mm-hmm. but yeah, you know, if you th- this is this is one of the reasons why you know, saying produce, like if there's like sort of a, you know if, if uh, evidence that like bugs have been in there, bugs have been eating it, or there've been like you know a patch where like maybe some fungus had gone on. It's like, oh, this is bad now. You don't want to do that. It's not even enough to just cut out that part. You just don't eat it. Uh, the reason is, is because that plant has been attacked by something and now it's increased the amount of toxins that, that are going to be available because yeah. it's fighting off that infection or that infestation. And so they, they are more harmful at that point. And we've known this for hundreds, sorry, for sorry. hundreds of years that, you know, you don't do that, maybe even thousands, you know. I mean, this, this has been passed down by, you know, folk, folklore and stuff like that. So that's why. And it's that's why Jeffrey wild. Dahmer would never bring anyone home that had the flu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, I'm, I'm listening and I'm watching poor Cam over there just fucking his mind is blowing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? So, yeah, uh, well, so Cam's gone on his own weight loss journey. He's lost 60 kilos uh, in like the last, nice. what, six yeah, well months done. or something? Yeah, it's been about six months, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's extra. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So today. Largely through ketogenic and exercise? Or? Oh, no, it's, uh, so uh, it's, I had a coach and she did like a reverse diet, so it's 
2200 calories a day four meals and it's always it's a lot of protein so it's basically like 190 grams of cooked chicken breast four cool. times a day yeah. but like, I was just growing up poor though just what you're talking about with mm. the veg it's like my whole life i've just cut off the shit bit of a bit of vegetables and stuff and I, yeah do you know what i mean like it's yeah. that's, that's what i was like holy cr- i was just even the thinking this morning with my strawberries in my shake i cut off all the dodgy bits and yeah. <laughs> blowing my mind yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like it's completely changed my relationship to food and now yeah. like it as a fuel and you can feel the difference from going from Absolutely. like four meals of hungry jacks every day to four meals of chicken breast and you're like mm. i feel ready to go i feel like my body's like loving it like yeah. it's like a machine i turned on oh it's macca's, and, and macca's slogan there in the best <laughs> way i'm loving it and that's where I, th- I i really am intrigued by this because when you talk about food being a medicine and food uh, potentially helping your body which is what i think we should be looking at food as it's it's fuel for our vehicle um what I've seen and the benefits that I've seen, and maybe you can go into this a bit further, is of the carnivore diet, there's a, a number of very good benefits, in, including like, you know, autoimmune diseases and, and things like uh, skin conditions, uh, inflammation, joint pain. So, yeah, c- can we go into that <coughs> side of things and what the benefits are and the science behind yeah. that? Can sort of I thing? piggyback that question as well? Mm. So, um, and you were talking about why plants were causing cancer and that caused you to go into mm. this mm. pathway. So... Well, I, th- I think I think I think they're they're, they're joined, right? Yeah. Because like you know, a lot of these things, I think it's it's as important what not to eat as what to eat. Mm. You know, and that's because you know you you eat meat, you eat fat. Fat's very good for you. Uh, Cholesterol is actually very good for you. It's what our hormones are made out of. All our cells are made out of it. Our brain is made out of it. Um, so these are very important nutrients that we need. But more than that, like these other things, actually cause harm. And so especially when you see like different diseases, I don't think of them as diseases per se. I think of them as toxicities and malnutrition. Mm. Toxic buildup of a species inappropriate diet and a lack of species specific nutrition, namely too many plants that we weren't designed to eat and they're causing harm and not enough meat that we're getting, you know, proper adequate nutrition from. Mm. So with autoimmune especially, I mean that that's and uh, even diabetes and all these other things, you can you can actually reverse these things and significantly improve them, if not completely eradicate them in, a, in an individual by just eliminating out certain things. So you can actually get benefits by going on a specific sort of vegetarian, vegan, whatever. You're cutting out all these processed foods, these sugars, these processed carbs, things like that. You can actually get improvement on that. But um, it, what does that mean? That means that there's, there's something in the food that's causing that disease. Yes, right? yeah. And so what a carnivore diet is, A, it's our biologically appropriate diet, is what we are designed to eat, is what our ancestors have been eating for literally millions of years since the dawn of time. And <clears throat> And what it does is it eliminates out all of these other things that can cause harm. Mm. And so, you know, you're, you're never going to get a better elimination diet than that. Yeah. Um, because like I've, so I've had, <coughs> obviously, a few friends do the raw mm. vegan, do the, the carnivore, do, and they've all had the same effect. And, and it, for me, it was always like, well, that's because you're eliminating all the fucking processed yeah. shit yeah. that we've we've been programmed to eat consistently like uh, even cereal for example almost like by default you get all these benefits because Mm. you cut out all that processed food and the stuff that's naturally not good for you yeah Yeah. and so and then how much of that is specifically it's it's just by eliminating it Mm. or but then you're obviously adding to it with with well well, well, it's both too you know because i mean certain things like i mean look at alzheimer's right you know your your brain is degrading you can look on mris it's really just shrinking down like a shriveled walnut you know and so you're actually losing you know mass of your brain right wow and so there are a lot of reasons for that if you're eating uh, uh carbohydrates you can get insulin resistant okay but that goes for your brain too your brain is tissue that can become insulin resistant so after a while you're, you're not getting all the requisite energy into your brain it starts degrading also you need these essential fatty acids to grow your brain you need cholesterol to grow your brain or at least maintain your brain as well after you've grown it and this is doubly important for kids who are developing their brains will not grow and will not develop to their potential if they're not getting enough fat and meat and if they're eating too many plants that are actually you know uh, uh, retarding the development of their brain um wow. we can look, we can look at this uh since before the agricultural revolution the average human brain size adult male brain size was 11% larger than it is now. Jeez. I think that's purely from uh, a, a nutritional deficit uh, that, we've, that we've been having. So, <clears throat> so this goes back to when I learned, you know, back in cancer biology and when I stopped eating plants. We learned, we went over all that, again, that, you know, plants use defenses, f- defense chemicals, that's their defense, right? Every, everything has defense, right? Animals can run away or fight back or hide. They have camouflage. <clears throat> plants 
cannot run away. They cannot fight back physically, right? So they need to use other means. Um, they can have spikes. They can have thick bark. They have all these different sorts of defenses, these barrier defenses. But if you get down to the actual flesh of the plant, they need something else. And so they actually have poisons that they can produce. And uh, they're quite abundant, as we know from the work of Bruce Ames. And um, and I remember you know, learning this and uh, from a cancer perspective, because we, it's a cancer biology class. And we learned pretty much in the first week that things like Brussels sprouts had 136 identified human carcinogens in them. So at that point, our parents are trying to kill us as kids. <laughs> Shit. So yeah. eat your Brussels sprouts. Yeah. I don't want any more I kids. Got, I got <laughs> Brussels sprouts at home. Damn it. <laughs> but who likes Brussels sprouts? I yeah, mean, no, like not that, me. I'm yeah. eating it for health. Yeah, apparently. It. They do taste a little bit poisonous, man. Yeah. Well, what do you think about it? Like? Yeah. There, there, there was a Simpsons thing where they talked about like, um, you know, it was one of those joke ones like Homer like choked on some some uh, broccoli or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, And he's just like, oh, yeah, broccoli is one of the most deadly things out there. It's like, what, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, And he's just like, he's like, yeah, well, they try to warn you with their horrible taste. <laughs> 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 That's, again, Simpsons yeah. predicting the future. That's it. Yeah, well, but it's know. exactly right. That is actually that is actually biologically very accurate because, you know, that bad taste yeah. is, is a signal from your brain and your tongue telling you, don't, don't eat this. <laughs> yeah. Naturally, you want to go ah, spit it out, right? So that's like a Mr. Yuck sticker, like just uh, in, yeah. in your body saying, like, "Do not eat this." So anything that tastes bitter, tastes bad, tastes extreme, you're just going, "Ugh, I don't like that." Anything that a kid would sort of turn their nose at, you probably should think about that because right. they're closer to their genetics. We can we can override this, you know. I mean, like, sure, most people here like drinking alcohol, but like, oh, yeah. I, did we like that when it first started? It tasted mm. like fish juice. Yeah, it's not good. Know? It was disgusting. Yeah. But we, but it's a, it's an, uh, an acquired taste. Is how they call so it. So the know? Italians, like, what happens there? Because everything's delicious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. I like that. But you can you can you can make something taste better, right? So so a potato. If you ever had a raw potato, yeah, it's not the best. It's really bitter. It's yeah. really yeah. gross. I remember trying that when I was a kid. I was like, "What does that taste like?" I'm like, "It actually looks like it probably tastes horrible." I did yeah. that with garlic. Yeah, because mm. I was backpacking. I was 18, and someone taught me how to cook. Like as I was. I don't grown man yeah. and we cooked the garlic I was like this smells so fucking good it must taste delicious and I just chucked a massive yeah. clump, oh, started yeah. chewing and it was fucked I was <laughs> like what the fuck this tastes nothing like it smells yeah so yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah so it's the thing you know those extreme tastes they can they can uh, just warn you away that there's something in here that you don't want yeah. but but you can cook them you can temper them you can put butter on them like a baked potato is pretty bland because you've cooked it you've denatured these toxins and so they're off the registry they sort of changed a bit and your brain can't recognize them so it tastes pretty bland does it's it cook really the much. toxins out well, that's what i was about to say by cooking these not these all vegetables of them. not, all, not of all of them yeah so a lot of them don't uh don't actually some lectins lectins are a really big broad class of defense chemicals that plants have there there are lectins in meat as well they don't mm -hmm. seem to cause a problem the ones in plants do um, you know, ricin, you know, that yeah. thing. It's like the most, it's super most poisonous. The yeah. Russian, Russians love it, eh? Yeah. yeah. Is that what they've poisoned people with? The spice? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah. So that, that's, that's a lectin and mm. that's from castor beans. And so when you press castor beans and you get out the castor oil, which is also toxic, it, it's a laxative. So people, you know, fix their constipation with that. Uh, the leftover stuff has ricin in it and that's a powdered one milligram per kilogram. Oh, sorry. One, Milligram, one, one microgram one per gram. kilogram is is enough to kill uh, uh, anybody, wow. you know, any animal. It's it's like the most toxic substance that we know of, Jeez. and uh, that's a plant's defense chemical. It like does not <laughs> want you to eat it. You know, that's Fuck. pretty clear evidence. In lots of plants, or Fuck just off. the castor one. Uh, that one, ricin is just in in that. I, I believe it might be in other things, yeah. but I think that's so the main one. So but there are lectins in everything. Wow. So through the animals that were. Eating, are, are we getting our micronutrients and macronutrients through what they're eating, and then through they're the cow, yeah. yeah, because it, because they those animals have well, if they're eating what they're supposed to eat, yeah. right? You can you can feed an animal a bunch of you know soy corn feed nonsense; they don't eat that in a while, yeah. So they're not going to have perfect ability to get nutrients out of that. They're not going to have a perfect ability to detoxify those things. Mm. Uh, ruminants are better at it. You know, but still, you know, like a grass-fed, grass-finished cow is, is going to be a, a little bit better. But, you and know. a ruminant is an animal that has two stomachs or something? Or yeah, it's like, like a twice, cow and they have a sort of, well, times. they call it like sort of four stomachs, you yeah. know. And, and they, yeah, they chew the cud and then put it back in. And, yeah. and uh, so they have that, they're, they're sort of, 
they're called four gut digesters and their four gut is called their rumen. And this is like these multi-chambered stomachs. And they're just really, really good at extracting nutrients and breaking this stuff down. A lot to do with the, the bacteria that they cultivate in there because no, no vertebrate animal can actually break down fiber. Mm. So they actually cultivate, they're almost sort of like bacteria farmers. That's what they do. They have this sort of chemistry set in their body that, that cultivates these bacteria. The bacteria are what eat the, the, the fiber. And as symbiosis. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. So they, they, the bacteria, they feed the bacteria fiber. The fiber eat that and actually excrete as waste short-chain fatty acids, which are 100% saturated. Mm. So that's what an herbivore is actually absorbing, is saturated fats as waste product of these bacteria. And then the bacteria die off, and the, and the animal breaks that down and absorbs that as protein. So even though it's just eating... It's amazing. You know, carbs and fiber and things like that, a gorilla or a cow or orangutan or whatever, what they're actually absorbing is fat and protein. And majority of it is fat as, as, as far as calories. So it's like 70 to 80% of their calories are yeah. from fat. And so, you know, and they talk about, uh, you, know, the, you know, producing methane and all that. So cows don't produce methane. First of all, they're not producing anything. They're not bringing these things yeah, out of yeah, thin yeah. air. Um, but it's, it's the bacteria that produce methane, yeah. right? And so if you, you know, as, as, a, as a vegetarian or eating a lot of fiber sort of stuff, you'll actually produce more methane as well. You get bloated, you'll get gassy and things like that. And, uh, and that's what that is because of the bacteria break, you know, that starts eating the fiber, they produce methane. Can we replicate any of the bacteria that they have in our stomach or it just doesn't align with human digestive systems? So, you know, you, depending on what you eat, you'll change your microbiome. Yeah. And so you'll, you'll start cultivating more of the bacteria that can eat that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, but it's not going to do much good for you because we don't have a big room in, or we don't have what we used to have, which is a very long cecum, which is what our appendix is now. It's about the size of your pinky finger. Uh, but millions of years ago, that was four feet long blind wow. pouch. And that's what it is in, in other primates that are herbivores. Uh, this is very, I think that's one of the like, key and anat comparative anatomical points showing that we are carnivores as opposed to herbivores, or at least we aren't designed to eat Sounds fiber right. anyway. Because previously, you know, we would have had a very long cecum, and that's where fiber would pack into. That's where these bacteria that would, would cultivate and eventually break this stuff down, and you'd absorb the fat and the protein. That's what happens in koalas. That's what happens in gorillas and chimpanzees and orangutan, things like that. They're hindgut digesters. So they have this very, very long cecum. And, and a very, very long colon. And so they are able to cultivate those bacteria and, and get... Um, so because it's in there for longer time and it has more chance longer, to process? A yeah. lot longer. So, so I mean, the, you know, the appendix, that's a blind pouch, right? And so when that's four feet long, that's a big tube. It can just sort of sit there and ferment and rot. Yeah. And that's what, that's what it's doing. And, and then the byproducts of that is the fatty gut. acids, fatty yeah. acids and protein. And so that's what they absorb and eventually it comes out. But even even gorillas aren't really good at this. So they actually have to eat their own feces oh. again. So they have to eat it a second time. So cows can sort of puke it up, chew their cud, bring it back down again. Yeah. Gorilla actually has to eat their own feces. That's how they get their B12. It's like a Gold Coast supporter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, Fuck. people talk about, whole oh, time well, you shit. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, talking about, like, oh, well, you know, you can get B12 just by eating plants. I'm like, yeah, maybe if you eat your own feces. But I guess <laughs> not going to catch you doing that. You know? Eat shit and die is like yeah. a whole new Fuck. meaning. Yeah. And our appendix <laughs> now, is it, is it just useless or does it have some function? I'm sure it has some function. Right. You know, so you, you don't support any tissue without, yeah. without having some use to it. But it doesn't have that function. Yeah. Right? So that purpose is vestigial. Right? So it used to be able yeah. to break down fiber it can't now yeah. i think that probably has something to do with uh appendicitis um because w what we're thinking now is that you get a fecal lift so you get this you know chunk of something stuck in there um and it stu stuffs up the opening and then that bacteria in there just grows like crazy and causes yeah. a problem um it's <coughs> like your own isis it's just a little yeah. suicide <laughs> bomber waiting yeah. to so go is that evidence that we've evolved over the <coughs> years to move away from fiber into meat? Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So millions of years ago, right? So millions and millions and millions of years ago, that would have been a big cecum, but we have not eaten fiber in millions and millions Is that and because we developed years. tools, hunting, and that's it. moved away from that? So we that's might have it. just been foragers to begin with. Oh, because yeah. That's, that we didn't have the tools to kill yeah. a fucking saber-toothed tiger or whatever, but now yeah. as we developed and go, okay. Yeah. And as an American... Um, 
Christianity and religion are massive with science mm -hmm. and you've spoken a lot about evolution. So where do you sit on that and how does that go in the States? Because it's... Well, I mean, yeah, it depends on who you talk to. I mean, mm. I have I have a lot of people that follow me, and some people do get upset about me talking about evolution. They get very yeah. upset about that, and you know, I'm not trying to you know stomp on anybody's beliefs. These are my beliefs. I yeah. don't think that uh, I don't think that you have to exclude God by by saying that there's evidence for evolution. Mm. I, mean, I think it's much more impressive to have a God that it created this infinite, infinitely old, infinitely large universe with all of this amazing complexity mm. and have us develop over billions and billions of years and creating a system that can do that. I think that's much, much more impressive mm. than going, here you go. Yeah. Here's yeah. an ant farm and then you're going to um, live in it. Mm, you know, yeah. I don't think that's a, as impressive, you know, I think that, it, that, um, so I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Mm. And so I do think that there's, very good evidence for evolution. I do think that there's, I mean, we see it now. We see viruses mutate and change. That, that's evolution. You know, you get a, va a vaccine for something that pushes the evolution of that virus in a different direction because now it can't infect people how it is now. It has to change. Only the things that, that uh, are, are not susceptible to that vaccine or someone's, in, in, you know, immunity are going to live. They're those are the only ones that are going to survive. So the ones that the old old uh, guard die out, and the new ones with a new mutation that allows them to survive goes. I mean, yeah. we see this every day, mm. and so that's that's something I think is, um, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of evidence for it. Yeah. So I'm in that camp. I don't I don't begrudge anyone, uh, you know, their their thoughts on creationism or anything. But either way, we are designed to mm. eat meat. Yeah. We are not designed to eat plants. And you can look at that in a lot of different ways, like the appendix. Yep. You know, we are we are not, we do not have the ability to break down fiber in any meaningful way. We just don't. Mm -hmm. And so that means we should not be eating it. And that was the entire argument in the 80s, why we shouldn't eat fiber, or why we should eat fiber, mm. was because we couldn't digest it. <laughs> we couldn't get nutrients out of it. That's and illogical. So, yeah, well, that's it. But they said mm. everyone was getting fat and sick. So we stopped eating fat, and everyone started getting fat. But they, <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and so they said, you oh, are not what you eat. So I did, yeah. I did watch this. Uh, that I think a reel that you shared <coughs> or you put up yourself with the South Park turn the pyramid upside down. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Fucking hilarious. Yeah. But is it closer to truth than what yeah, you, you'd expect? Absolutely. So turn the food pyramid upside down. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and then just just cut off a couple of the tears, you know, just, just yeah. stick yeah. with the meat and fat. Yeah, so, so Metamucil, yeah. if you don't, if you want to sponsor <laughs> us, we can't, yeah. we can't have you. So yeah, let's get more into the into the the carnivore sort of stuff. So you're you're suggesting just fucking cut it all out. Is that yeah. potentially because you're just like there's no way of avoiding the the poisons that well, these they're plants? I mean, they're they're pernicious. I mean, so all plants defend themselves that way, and so sort of. Big circle back yeah, around. This is what the podcast <laughs> always asks. Yeah. We yeah. fully just go on tangents <laughs> and come back. Yeah, you know that that's what we were learning in in my cancer biology class. That, you know uh, that Brussels sprouts had 136 known carcinogens. White mushrooms had over 100. Spinach, kale, lettuce, celery, cabbage, cucumber, broccoli, we, everything. It had. Uh, we literally were given pages with the with the name of the produce and the number of identified carcinogens. Page after page after page. It wasn't a single one. I looked and I was like, okay, what's the lowest number here? Yeah. It wasn't a single one under sixty. I'm like, this is nuts. Yeah. And I remember thinking in my head, oh, like this, this is crazy. We were all looking around wildly. Like I was like, this must be a joke. Someone must be in on it. Looking for someone smirking or <laughs> something like that. Not, nothing like that. And finally, it just dawned on us. I'm like, my God, this guy's serious. And I remember thinking in my head, I was like, but. But vegetables are still good for you, though, right? Mm. I, I, no, I hated yeah. them. I never ate them. And he, like, just, just perfect timing. I, th I felt like he read my mind because he just looked at us and he said, I don't eat salad. Mm. Maybe yeah. he was sponsored by the meat industry like could the other be. professor. Yeah. <laughs> He's giving you fake news. Well, could be, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but he, but he said, like, I don't eat salad. Mm. I don't eat vegetables. I don't let my kids eat vegetables. Plants are trying to kill you. So I'm like, <laughs> Right. Fuck. Yeah. Hear that, Tash Peterson? Yeah. Yeah. So we had the we had Tash Peterson, the vegan activist. Mm. Hers is not on any at all. At all at any no health way. grounds. She's it's not more basing on health. Grounds. Yeah, sure. compassion. So where do you sit on that side of things? Because obviously, yeah. um, <coughs> the meat industry at large can be pretty fucking brutal, disgusting, and, and mm. yeah, and brutal. Well, but the uh, there is a compassionate side processed? to hunting and processed and stuff. Mm -hmm. But there is a compassionate side, I think, to hunting. Um, not the fucking redneck <laughs> dickheads that go out there just yeah, being assholes. People, but yeah, the, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Go, yeah. Let's go down well, the I, no, look, I, I totally sympathize. Sympathize, and I think that you know when you, especially if you're deriving your nutrition from animals, you really do have to pay a lot of respect to that, and you have to treat those animals very well. You have a you have a social contract with them. 
you protect them in life and you feed them, you house them, you take care of them. You know, I mean, these different ranchers out in like, you know, northern uh, uh, North America, like in Canada, I was talking to a lady. Uh, she was just by for virtue of just living out on a ranch and hating vegetables. And the only thing you ate are things that you grew and raised. And she was like, well, I'm not growing vegetables to eat them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so she just ate meat. So she's been a carnivore for 60 years, a rancher wow. for 60 years. Wow. And she loves her animals. I mean, she's out there in minus 40 degree weather, chipping ice off the hooves and making sure these animals are safe, you know, on Christmas day, mm. you know, working for 12 hours, you know, during a blizzard to make sure the animals are safe. Mm. You know, there's a lot of, there actually is a lot of love and compassion that goes into this. It's not, it's not uh, just a horrible, evil thing. Simply, you know, even if you're an asshole, that's your product. That's your livelihood. You know, you let that animal die. Mm. You know, you let it suffer. It's not going to grow as big. It dies. You don't get it at all. That's your money. Yeah. You know, you're going to go out of business. It's as simple as that. And mm. so it's forced altruism. You have to take care. Mm. You have to yeah. take good care of that animal. So that's the thing. You protect it from predators. You, you heal it when it's sick. You protect it from the weather. You feed it. Make sure it has enough. If, you know, there's not enough uh, pasturage, uh, you, you're bringing in hay. All these sorts of things that you're doing to take care of that animal. Yeah. And then, you know, and then you feed it and then they feed you. That's the deal. And you don't get to break that. You don't get to hurt them. You don't get to have them suffer. I totally agree with that. Um, you know, there's, you know the, the, the hard truth is, is that we are heterotrophs. All animals are heterotrophs. Something has to die for us to live. And you're talking about plants communicating. They don't want to die either, mm -hmm. you know, as, as we discussed. Yeah. And they actually respond in, uh, to pain and to damage, like as we discussed. They have communication, very intricate, like, almost like neural network quality. Like avatar style. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, they, they, and, they, and they communicate through different uh, um, uh, fungus and things like that, uh, you know, in, in the soil. And they can actually transport nutrients and, and moisture to other plants around them. And so actually they a sound better than us. <laughs> they sound way nicer yeah. than us. Well, they're all taking care of themselves. Yeah. Know, and, and it provides an advantage, right? Because yeah. if you have a lone tree out there, it's going to just be hammered by the wind. But if you're in a big forest, you're, you're actually very protected. Yeah. Mm. And so there are a lot of there are a lot of benefits by helping out the other trees and plants around you, and not just be fighting. No, no, no. This is all just cutthroat sort of things. Mm. They actually help even uh, different species of plants. They can connect through these these little networks mm. of um, of uh, fungus. Sometimes I think fungi are pretty switched on. Pretty crazy. Yeah. 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 I've okay. had a lot of. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> experiences where I feel like they're smarter than us or they're connecting somehow. Yeah. Well, mm. it's, it's very intricate, you yeah. know, and, and so that's something that people don't understand too is that plants feel pain, they respond to pain, they don't want to die either. Um, we just don't see them suffering that we in the same way we see an animal, but in the 1950s, no one thought animals could feel, well, they don't feel pain in the same way that we do. You know, mm. I mean, that's obviously stupid, but, mm. you know, but just because they can't, they can't communicate in English and saying, hey, that hurts me, please stop. Yeah. You know, they said, well, it's not the same thing. Well, now we're, now we're you know, doing that with plants. They, oh, well, they can't do that. That's crazy. Actually, there's a ton, mm. ton of, of data showing that they do feel pain. Yeah. They respond to pain. They respond, they get stressed. They get hurt. They have big problems with it. So it, it's, it's more complicated than that. But, you know, there's no nice way to kill anything, yeah. right? And so, but with kindness, I heard killing yeah, with kindness. With kindness yeah. <laughs> but there seems to be yeah. this detachment from well, the factory farming. <laughs> yeah, the, mm. the detachment, the packaged bit of flesh that we get on the table is so detached from the animal yeah. it was, and it's so convenient. And so, I think it's close to ninety six percent of the food meat that mm. uh, Australians ingest is factory farmed, probably, meat, yeah. which is. Like it, it's again, it's creating this detachment from the animal that's given mm. its life for you, to, and you have no appreciation for it at all. Whereas what I'm seeing in these hunters, they have this the compassion mm. for the and appreciation for the animal that's given its life to give it its meat, and mm -hmm. they'll kill the one animal, and it'll mm. last them all winter. You know, like yeah. instead yeah. of I guess like um, and we. Oh, when I have my chicken wings, I need forty chickens. Yeah, yeah or you yeah. have, but you also have your uh, you know, even your vegans and stuff like that. They'll have their vegetables, but then how many insects, how many animals, how many well, small yeah. rodents have been I killed for the, the animals and, so and, we, for and the we food? Studied that, mm. you know. So out of University of New South Wales, two thousand eleven, there was a, a paper published that showed that uh, eating to, to get one kilo of um, of uh, plant based protein you had to kill 25 times the amount of sentient animals mm. than you would wow. to get one kilo of animal-based protein. And again, going back to bioavailability, that one-to-one -one kilo, that is not the same thing. Mm. Yeah. You know? So you're actually not getting, you're probably you know, getting much less than that as a percentage. Mm. So you know, it's actually probably you have to kill more animals to get the same equivalent amount of bioavailable. 
uh, protein as well. So that's what they don't consider. You know, you're, you're tilling a field. You First of all, monocropping is terrible for the environment. This is not natural. This yeah. is animals living in and being in a pasture. That's natural. That yeah. is nature. Mm. Animals being out in in in, yeah. uh, in the land. Having just one crop spread over, yeah, however far. Well, it it, it just well to grow one crop, you necessarily have to destroy destroy an entire ecosystem. Yeah. You have to kill all the plants, all the animals. Fifty five percent of Borneo's rainforest have been dug up and 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 bulldozed to grow uh, palm seed oil crops. They've killed all the orangutans, killed all the snakes, killed all the animals that called that their envir- their habitat. And people say, well, and, and vegans will say, will dismiss that by saying, well, but they're replacing it with plants. So it's, I mean, it's the same thing. It's actually not, you know, mm. because A, you've already killed all the damn orangutans, yeah. Yeah. you know, and all the snakes and all the, all the other, other animals that live there. And, and biodiversity is like incredibly important oh for an God, ecosystem yeah. to survive. Absolutely. So, so those palm plants, that's not an ecosystem. Yeah. You know, there may be birds and things like that that go in there, but any large animal that goes in there messes with those crops, they get shot. Yeah. You know, and so you know, if you have a big you know, field of corn and you have pigs going in there to try to eat it, you have kangaroo that go and try to eat it, deer that try to eat it, they get shot. You know, and that meat goes to waste. That's not someone hunting. It's just yeah. like it's 2 a.m. There's a bunch of things you have to kill them. Like, who needs a thousand pounds of hog? At yeah. 2 a.m., mm. you know? So, like, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday night in Northbridge, I reckon we yeah, could yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah. Chuck it on a donut. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. again, that comes into that detachment from the animal and the mm. lack of appreciation, but also the greed that we're having. So, to, and that's another question. If we're to go down this path of like, hey, we need to eat more meat mm-hmm. and less vegetables, that we still have to grow produce mm. for the animals to eat. Mm. Not necessarily. So what's yeah. The, yeah so wh- what's the scenario? So there? so the thing is, is that a lot of the a lot of the feed that goes to the animals are, are the are the byproducts, the waste products of, of the crops that we grow, right? Like hey, we're not growing that for the cow, you know that that had you know something on the end of it, you know that we wanted to use in the stalks they go to the ah. to the cow. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And ah. so you know, and, and they're talking about like, you know, like corn stalks. Cor- I mean, they corn cobs and corn stalks and all that sort of stuff that gets churned up into uh, into animal feed. The soy, it's not necessarily like soy beans, you know? I mean, that's going to, you know, idiots eating edamame and things like that. <laughs> yeah. You know? And like... <laughs> to, to idiots <laughs> eating edamame. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speaking of idiots yeah. eating edamame, I didn't know until I was 34 that you're supposed to fucking pop them out. Oh. Of a, uh, I was just eat. My friend's like, I love edamame. I'm like, it's fucking gross, man. I can't even get it. Yeah. I'm chewing the whole thing. Oh yeah. my God. Like not popping the bean out. I'm <laughs> eating it in the shell. Did you just learn that then? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. So, uh, so yeah. Right. So, so the thing is, is that like you know the, the edamame part, right? The soybeans, like that. That's actual product. That that's a cash crop, right? And then and then the rest of the plant. There's a whole plant that goes with those stupid little beans, right? And so, you know, that what is it? What do you do with that, right? That's what the animal feed is, right? And so that goes in, and, and that's given, you know, uh, to uh, you know, livestock and things like that to eat, or it gets burned. If I mean, because that's the thing too, you cannot have plant agriculture without animal agriculture, because a lot of the waste products go to feed the animals. If you don't have enough animals to eat this, these byproducts, then you have to burn them. You know, mm. you can't you can't throw them in a landfill. I mean, there's too many uh, billions of tons of this stuff a year, so you burn them. And so you know that all that all the the Amazon forest and things like that it was a whole distraction anyway. Like you saw that on social media. It's like, oh my god, the Amazon's burning and no one's talking about. it. I was like, that's a distraction. Someone's trying to fucking keep us off of something. Yeah, you know, political doesn't sound like, like the media today. <laughs> <do, laughs> distraction <laughs> techniques. Yeah. yeah, and like uh, and so then then the only thing you heard about for the next m- two months was about how the Amazon's burning and they blamed far, you know ranchers and cow things like that's not what was happening. Mm. Those fires actually were. L- below average. This is this is on NASA's website. They said this. They're looking at satellites, looking at the different fires. They're like, well, fires happen every year, mm-hmm. and this is actually below average for the amount of fires that happen every year. And the majority of those fires are actually farmers burning their crops after they've harvested them because they don't have enough far- they don't, There's not enough livestock to sell these things to, mm. so they just have to burn them to get ready for the for wow. the next round of crops. And that was what the Amazon was burning. The Amazon is just like a state, like WA, yeah. you know. And so the Amazon was burning, not the Amazon rainforest. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. state of the area. Amazonia was oh, burning wow. because of the, these these. So these who's got farms. who benefits from that fake news being spread, or what are they trying to? So whatever, you know, if you ever watched the movie uh, Wag the Dog? 
Oh. Watch it. It's like a Dustin Hoffman movie. It's really interesting. There's all these, these political issues that are coming up. And they're like, well, you need to distract this. So they actually fabricated a war. And they went with like these Hollywood producers to like make all these scenes and things, which we've actually seen. And that's yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen this in like you know, different sorts of disasters. These bombs went off. And you see like these people just laying there. All that. It's like, that's the same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? This is like six yeah. people the it's same guy. It's the perfect guy. guest for our podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bad actors, yeah. But, yeah. You, but you do, you see this stuff, yeah. and you actually see behind mm. behind the footage, like the people like the leak can't, you know, footage of this stuff, and it was just like, what the hell is going, going on? on here? And it was like, not nearly as big of a story what as I call them been. false flags. Yeah. Yeah, false flags. Like that, I yeah. think we and fake news. And you see it with <laughs> in the past with uh, the Gulf of Tonkin incident, and it got us to it got, got us got US to join the the Vietnam War and and whatnot. So uh, you see yeah. how they can use a false thing to yeah. implement yeah. something that yeah. they already wanted in the first place. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that that instance of it, but I mean, this is something that is used, and and so the the movie. Um, uh, Wag the dog was all about that, yeah. and they had this sort of fake war, and they had these like you know different different people, and they were trying to like uh, just just pull the American uh, thoughts in a very specific direction right. and all banned behind this this conflict and it was all good against evil and all this sort of stuff. It was all now. garbage. It was all garbage. And so, you know, uh, you, 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 you have to sort of, you know, wonder about these things. And then you see something's happening politically. And sometimes p- people point this out, you know, where like, like oh, everyone's like talking about whatever. And then all of a sudden someone was just like, yeah, so when everyone was looking over here, you know, yeah, Congress yeah, yeah. quietly passed a 1,400-page you know, omnibus bill that's like, you know, increase the spending by $2 trillion. Was anybody aware of this? Yeah. You know? And yeah. so they, they just sneak these things under the radar like that. Well, I see that <coughs> and um, it made very famous, I guess, by someone like Rogan sharing it, but the, the things that they recommend to eat and what they mm. don't recommend, and this is what they're teaching in schools. Mm. What are the... It's like, even worse now, yeah. yeah. Like why are the... Why are the what's the... It, I guess it's <coughs> lobbying is... Yeah. Is what That's a big part of it, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the the different food lobbies are, are very, you know, uh, powerful. Because mm. um, it's state-funded <coughs> indoctrination of, of a bad, yeah. bad diet. Yeah, and, and, you know, even here in WA and in America and other places, they're really pushing towards the whole vegan plant-based thing. Yeah. You know, I, I, I know people who said that they've had, you know, letters sent out from their school saying that you're not, you know, shouldn't send... Uh, like you know, like sandwiches with meat and things like that in because there's nowhere to refrigerate it so it just goes bad. I'm like, really? Mm. Lunch meat goes bad in yeah. three hours? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, is that a new thing? Because like people have been going to school Forever. with like bags of lunch for <laughs> how many yeah. hundreds of years? Yeah. You know, like, you know, someone like, you know, go to, some guy would go to work with like, you know, just some you know, yeah. piece of meat stuck in his pocket. Wow, if you're like, Italian in the yeah. 90s, you used to go with sausage and yeah. <laughs> full spread. Yeah. 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 So like, you know, I mean, when, when did this happen? happen yeah, yeah. Mm. so um and i've seen wef world economic forum f- mm. of course they should be giving dietary advice but they're pushing for, for us to eat more less meat and more yeah. crickets and yeah of course. i guess that's for climate that's change and just picked up on what my thought process was going what's your opinion yeah. on replacing meat with cricket because it's theoretically well it's still, still, still animals yeah. right you know but i mean there's obviously it's not really what we're supposed to eat it's um not gonna not gonna have as much fat um as other things you just need way more of it hey yeah, and it's um, you know it's not as good as a cow, and you have to mm. eat a lot more than. Well, Bear Grylls will have you believe yeah. in this protein. <laughs> there is fifty times more. Yeah, so well, well, it is good protein but yeah. source, um, but it's not. But you actually need a lot of fat. Yeah, you, know, you need more fat as a proportion of your calories than and you do does protein. Does seafood count as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. more. Natural? Yeah. yeah, anything that had parents, basically. Anything that had parents? <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, so, so it, it tastes better when they're grown with love. When, yeah, exactly. when you say <laughs> fuck these little orphan insects, <laughs> eh? <laughs> when you say we're not supposed to eat it, um, does geographical sort of lineage and stuff does that great question? Does that cr- <coughs> like, change what we should be eating? Yeah, like obviously, the Inuits are going to eat something very different to yeah. their uh, Aboriginals. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and being Italian, would that affect? What I would probably yeah. be able to process better than this. What are you, Skippy Kiwi? No, nah, Kiwi, <laughs> Scotland Island, yeah. So, yeah. like, diff- they'd be different. Potatoes. Be very different. Yeah, potatoes. Uh, yeah, potatoes. <laughs> very different uh, diets was what we'd probably. Yeah. Have. So, you, you can have different, different, um, uh, you know, susceptibilities or defenses against species inappropriate foods mm. but you know any species is going to have one optimal diet for us that's that's fatty meat and you can get that from kangaroo you can get that from cow you can get that from whatever but it's it's the animal 
you know, animal flesh with a lot of fat, you know, is, w- is what we need as humans. Um, as far as like different plants and things like that, you know, Europeans and other, other, you know, ethnic backgrounds have had access to agriculture a lot further back than say the Australian Aboriginals. Mm. And that's why people from Europe do a lot better on carbs and plants and things like that than the, the native Australians would. Yeah. Uh, when I first got to Australia, probably right away, people were saying, like, hey, when you have a, an Aboriginal uh, patient come into the hospital, whatever their age is on their, on their sticker, just add 20 years to that. Because when you're looking at different sort of uh, illnesses and diseases, they come sort of in... Well, like in biologically at 20 years. Yeah, yeah exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, if, if someone's 40, basically think about what's common in 60-year-olds. Wow. You know, because they just age so much quicker and they break down so much faster. I think that's exactly to do with the fact that they don't have as many defenses against these these plant toxins that, that we would, you know, coming from Europe. I remember learning that actually when I was a kid. Um, when I was living in California, I think it must have been like seven, I heard this, this you know, news story talking about it, how when eating a Western diet, specifically when eating a Western diet, Native Americans were four times as likely to get obesity, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and all the rest. And I remember thinking at the time, I was like, well, doesn't that mean the food is causing the disease? Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. if they don't eat the food, they don't get the disease. And we eat the food, and we get the disease just at a lower rate. You know, what are they eating when we're not? What's a non-Western diet? Like, what the mm. hell are they talking about? I didn't know it at the time, but what they what they used to eat were just high. They were high-fat carnivores. They ate a bunch of buffalo m- and pemmican. It was 50-50, you know, dried meat and, and rendered fat. That was what they would eat. It was about 80% of their calories from fat. That's what they'd eat the whole year. They'd do a buffalo drop. They'd scare, like, a herd of buffalo over a cliff. They'd all fall to their death. And they would use, you know, knives and things like that to skin them and, and prepare them. They'd dry the meat. They'd make pemmican. And that's what they'd eat the rest of the year was pemmican. It's Is very pemmican like jerky? Yeah, sort of. You, you dry out the meat like, it, like you would a jerky. And then they would use like a big stone, like mortar and pestle, just grind this stuff up into like just big powdered uh, mm. dried beef and buffalo. And, uh, and then they would render the fat. Right. So they would sort of melt out the fat and make tallow and they would mix that in sort of at a 50 50 proportion. Yeah. And uh, and that would that would dry and harden and you can uh, you can just eat that. Mm. And it's, um, I kind of want to try that. It's good. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. Yeah. There's one of the things that, um, you know, I've, I've had you can't really get it in um, in uh, Australia. I should have brought some for you guys because they mm. send it to me. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is a, it's called a carnivore bar. It's, it's just pemmican. OK. Wow. It's the same idea. You can make it yourself. It's actually very easy, and um, you just do that exact thing. You take these very thin strips of uh, of beef or whatever. You get very cheap, just as a very cheap lean cut, mm. and um, and cut them into very very small thin pieces. Dry them out in like a food dehydrator. You can do it in your oven on a very low heat, and uh, with the door open, and then you grind that up in like a high power blender until you powder it and then you get just like just melt some tallow you can just buy grass-fed tallow and you mix them together 50 50 proportion by weight put that into like a little casserole dish or something like that put it in the fridge it'll set and you just cut off bars mm. you know and so wow. and it, it's like um is it all like protein fat bar that's it yeah yeah, yeah so it's, it's perfect nutrition yeah. in a bar so it's, it's perfect for like you know when you go camping or it hiking taste or it just bland? i think it tastes great yeah you know and um you know the native americans apparently a lot of them actually just preferred that mm. yeah. and when they're eating like the fresh meat and cooking they're like <sighs> well I, 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 I forgive my memory but i can't remember the book that i partially <laughs> read didn't read the whole thing but i remember that <clears throat> part of that being um they were talking about the some of these uh other cultures that went to a Western diet, mm-hmm. not only did it affect their, you know, obesity and stuff, it was affecting the, like their jaw structure. Yeah, yeah. it was like oh, shifting their uh, Western price. Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And, and like teeth were moving, and like they were sort of shrinking in and cre- yeah. creating all these issues. Like, yeah. So, so your your jaw size, and your tooth development are predominantly uh, nutritional. So crooked teeth are not genetic. Crooked teeth are uh, malnutrition. Generally, from wow. vitamin K two. This is this is in dentistry journals. I read this about five years ago in a dentistry journal. Um, <clears throat> it's mostly K two. K two only comes from meat. You can't get this from plants. Uh, so if you're not eating enough meat, it's fat soluble. So you're not eating enough fat. Most people are trimming the fat. They're eating very lean meat, and so you're not getting enough K two, among other things. And so, you know, you're not going to develop your teeth properly. So before the agricultural revolution, and in these native populations that are still eating just meat. You know, like the, the uh, Native Australians and Native Americans and, and elsewhere, 
they had big, wide jaws. They all had their the wisdom teeth in. They had perfectly straight teeth. I mean, how many animals in the wild you see with crooked teeth? Yeah. Mm. No, it's, it's not it's a shocks. thing. Shocks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's like, but it's not a thing. Yeah. You know, like they have, they have very uniform teeth, mm. you know, throughout throughout nature, and humans do too. And then, then uh, in, in Weston Price, you know, he looked at these these generations of people who moved to London. You know, the grandfather had this big, strong. It's about jaw. to say English people, and yeah. you said move to London. Yeah. 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 And so then they, you know. They, uh, so it's, it's K2, K1, uh, D3, and calcium, all these things play a role in this. But most people are deficient in K2. And so, you know, uh, these guys moved to England, moved to London, and the, the grandfather's big, big, wide, strong jaw, all his teeth, you know, no cavities. The son is like the jaw is a little more shrunken Ooh. in, a bit mm. more crooked, crowded teeth. The grandson has just pushed yeah. in jaw yeah. and it's just all just a mouthful of just you know wow. English teeth because yeah. yeah. <laughs> when we're also talking about meat we're not talking processed meat we're talking eating good meats mm. obviously because that that's yeah. part of the western diet is it processed meats sausages and these sorts well but also what, what are they what are they processed with uh, right what, what do you add to that fennel right? and yeah. grains and Plants, yeah, yeah. Plants. you're adding plants and sugar, yeah. right? Which plants sugar, sugar yeah. comes from plants, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So all these things are plant products that are bad for you, and that's what you process with. So it's not the meat itself. I'm nearly you know? converted, man. What's the argument Definitely. against the carnivore diet? Yeah, is there not one? Is there anyone that goes, yeah, but X, Y, Z? Because you're clearly mm. uh, an argument against sustainability. Because 23 mm. years is a mm. long yeah, time. Good, yeah, and you look about 23. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> so look about the age you've been. Yeah. So yeah. I um I'm having a hell anxiety attack. We're recording the sound hey after everything. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, okay. all <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, so, so most people's so there's, there's three major claims, and one of your, your guest uh, was from an ethical point of view. That's certainly it. The ethics, the bioethics. You know, worried about the animal rights and things like that, which I, I think that's that's absolutely something that yeah deserves to be talked about. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's important. The other is, is the environmental aspect. Um, uh, the impact on the environment and the other is the nutritional aspect. So those are the three main things. And so as far as just the nutritional aspect, the main arguments are you uh, fat and cholesterol are bad for you, right? Which we, we sort of discussed. That's that's garbage. Yep. Um, and we can go in more into that, but you know, saturated fat and cholesterol are actually really, really important for you. And um, and they they're simply not the the you know the boogeyman that people have made out to be. But that's the main one. Oh, what's your cholesterol? I'm like, I don't I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that, that why? It's never a problem. Yeah. Is that why you hear of that? Um, is it called like rabbit? Uh, oh, rabbit starvation. Rabbit, yeah. rabbit starvation. What's so a rabbit very, starvation? Very very high protein. You're not getting any fat, and so you can actually cause harm because you you have to have fat. Fat yeah. is actually very important because yeah, the rabbits yeah. were so lean, no fat, and yeah. they were okay. people that stuck in the wild would eat the rabbits and then yeah. almost starve. Or they'd be malnutrition. No, they'd malnourished. be ma very malnourished. Yeah. yeah, and so you know you, you and they did, they get voraciously hungry. They couldn't eat enough. Mm. Rabbits so a, bought, like a bag stuff. of pork crackling is no yeah. good, or is that all right? That's yeah, fine. <laughs> look, at, look, at, look at the look at the ingredients though. Most oh. of them were like uh, you know, deep fried in yeah. uh, sunflower oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that stuff's Fuck. toxic. Yeah, just you know, real pork crackling. Yeah, but you can get you can get it like the stuff that's like uh, fried in lard. That's Ooh. great. It tastes yes. way better too. And uh, and it's much better for you, you know. Oh, uh, my cooking world is changing. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Five years of vegetarian, and I'm almost <laughs> just going to go the exact opposite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, some, a lot of people do, you know. I'm certainly I mean, going to try it. Well, listen, a lot, a lot of people, you know, go vegetarian or vegan for very good reasons. You mm. know, they're like, well, this is this is supposed to be the better health. I really care about my health. I care about the environment. I care about this. So this all makes sense. And then you learn, okay, my health isn't actually all that great. And you know, maybe this isn't what I thought it was. But your your motivations are still there, you know, and and maybe that, that girl is just like, well, you know, I, I this is I want to help animals this and that. So you have these motivations, but when you when you dig into it more and you find that actually health wise, and the other ones like you're not going to get all the nutrients you need just from eating meat. That's not true either. I mean, look at the Inuit, look at me, look at the Aboriginals, look at the Native Americans, look at our history for the last three million years. We were yeah. only eating meat. Okay, if you can't get everything you need from meat, then all these civilizations don't exist, yeah. and the humans. Don't exist. We are apex predators, top of the food chain. That was taught throughout history up until yesterday. And they said, no, 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 we were actually herbivores. Since when? Yeah. Like, when have you seen a cave painting of a salad? <laughs> <laughs> That's so true, eh? Yeah. There's no one with a spear aimed at a tomato. No. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're yeah. going to sneak up on this crop. Yeah, yeah, yeah wow. absolutely.
So, you know, we have always been eating meat and, and exclusively meat. You know, we, we have very good evidence of that with the stable isotope studies looking exactly what uh, animals ate. And you can tell which animals were, you know, up and down the food chain because, you know, you can tell how far away they were from eating plants. You have herbivores, they have a certain amount of nitrogen 15, it's stable in, in the fossils, and they say, okay, well, this thing was just eating plants. Okay, well, this, a this animal was eating animals that ate plants. And this and that concentrates as you go up with this nitrogen 15. We have the highest carnivore rating of any animal ever, ever checked before the agricultural revolution. Wow. So we had a higher carnivore rating than lions, hyenas, foxes, wolves wow. alive at the same time in the same area, meaning that we were eating the lions and hyenas yeah, and foxes yeah. and wolves, Fuck. including as well as the things that those... So for things. people that don't know, nitrogen-15 is an isotope of nitrogen, right? Because yeah. nitrogen is normally 14, and you can track that isotope as each animal will, will digest it. The next animal that gets that gets all of that nitrogen in their system. Yeah. Is that right? By accumulation it, or whatever. Yeah, it's it builds up. Yeah, exactly. And it builds up in the bones. Yeah. And you and it and it's stable. It stays so there. Yeah. And so you can measure the amount of of nitrogen fifteen in these in these bones. And so you can actually you actually see wow. the food chain. And so yeah. we were top of the food chain. Apex predators. Apex predators don't graze. You know, <laughs> great white sharks. You hear don't that? Hipsters, yeah. no cheese boards. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. Um, if, if you're going for someone like me or Delby, we're going to start our carnivore journey tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what, what are some of your tips? Learn to hunt. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because I obviously, I, I, yep, we talked about the detachment from the package sort of stuff. Like where do we probably source our meat? Is like organ meat, is that pretty vital for it? And then chicken and stuff like that. But how do you get your variation for flavour? Like salt is okay, I would assume, because okay. you could get that naturally. Yeah, yeah so there's a lot it's of questions. Plant. But yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people that don't use salt at all. Like I've I've yeah. gone, you know, a long time without salt. It's fine. Things taste a bit more bland at, for the first couple of weeks, and then it actually tastes fine. I've, I've tend to eat less and less and less salt as I go. Um, you don't need it. You don't have to have it. Mm -hmm. um, How do you stop from cramps? Or that, is it a different kind of salts that? Stops yeah, you from it would generally be different different things. You know, like uh, magnesium mostly is, is yeah, what's okay. involved in cramps, and that and, and you actually have, will have a high magnesium level when yeah. when you just eat meat. Sometimes people have a bit of electrolyte fluctuations. And when we say salt, it's not just table salt. Like it could be a magnesium chloride, potassium chloride. We just use the word salt. So it's a general think, term, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so when you just use that, minerals and yeah, yeah. But but you know, salting like when we're talking about you know salt in, in the yeah. food context, it would be f food salt, which is like yeah, sodium yeah. chloride. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, there are tons of other salts. And um, but you know, sometimes you get like electrolyte fluctuations in your. Um, in your sort of early weeks when you're switching from eating carbohydrates to not eating carbohydrates, going on a keto, any keto sort of diet because uh, insulin plays a role in, in, in pulling back the, the electrolytes in your kidney so you don't, you don't sort of pee it all out. Um, and so when your insulin drops dramatically, your body has, sort of has, to, has to readjust. You might sort of pee out more electrolytes than you, than you want to. That's the theory. Mm -hmm. uh, I find in practice, most people don't have a problem. And, uh, but if you do, you know, just just take some some electrolytes. It's not a big deal. For yeah. it, you only need to do it for a short term. Um, when I test my bloods and and my patients' bloods, we don't see electrolyte deficiencies. I mean, actually, magnesium is very very good levels, and, and the rest of it's good levels as well. People talk about potassium, getting cramps with potassium. Like when we have patient, first of all, it's very very rare to get someone with a potassium uh, deficiency, even in the hospital. You have to be very sick. Something has to be going very wrong because it's very important keep your potassium in very tight uh, levels because if it goes too high, goes too low, it affects your heart and your heart gets arrhythmias. And so, you know, how they, they kill people with like lethal injection, you know, with, with death penalties, you know, in various places they do that. They anesthetize them, they put them to sleep, and then they give them a big whack of, of uh, potassium chloride. Mm. And that raises their potassium up to such a high level, their heart just stops. Yeah. Right? Because it goes into a fatal arrhythmia. And, and it just stops. So, so that, that's what you're playing with when you're playing with potassium. Um, so you don't really get cramps. You know, when people have this and we're supplementing them in, in the hospital and things like that and their potassium is really low, they're not just going, oh, my God, I've got cramps mm. and all these sorts yeah. of things. They get atrial fibrillation. They get their heart starts going, going funny. Yeah. And, and that's what we see. So uh, They must have potassium in the jab. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, magnesium can. Magnesium can, can cause... Um, can cause uh, uh, cramps, things like that. Yeah. I find it's mostly dehydration. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're eating more and more and more salt, you actually up your demand for water as well because your body's actually trying to clear 
all this stuff. He's like, we don't want all this salt. Yeah, yeah. And so then you become hyponatremic? Hyponatremic is if you are just drinking way, way, way too much Too water. much and then you're diluting the... Yeah, and you're just peeing out too much. But that, that's hard to do too. I mean, mm. you have to be pretty sick as well. Yep. Um, and But you can do it. You can overdo it. But if you're drinking to thirst and you're salting to taste, you really w- aren't going to get into a problem like yeah. that. Um, it'd, be, it'd be very uncommon. So... Um, so what's a consist? What's a, a meal like your day look like? Yeah. So you know, I normally you know, if you're eating high density nutrition, then you don't need to eat as much or as often. So I tend to eat in the evenings. I think that I feel best doing that. After you eat like a big meal, just like a lion, you know, takes down a gazelle and it eats that. It's like sleeps for sixteen hours, right? Yeah. Because you you've expended the energy to get your kill to get your food, and now your body's like right. Rest and digest, take it easy, don't waste energy anymore. Yeah. So you get naturally lethargic, naturally sleepy, and you just, you you, you naturally want to go to bed. Mm-hmm. And so that works very well for me in the evening. Uh, if I were to eat sort of during the day, that can I can still get that lethargy. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, I've got things to do, and I can't really do that. Um, so I might le- eat like a half meal if I wanted to do that. But mostly I'll eat in the evening. And if I eat in the evening and I get enough fatty meat, then I find that I'm not hungry until the next evening. Mm. So, like, I haven't had breakfast today. I, I don't feel like having lunch. You know, I'm just going to go and do my thing. And, yeah. and uh, you know, later on, I'll, I'll have a big steak. And, and for 23 20. years, you're mentally, like, that's normal now, hey? That's very normal. Because before, if you, if you are switching, your brain's like, this is eat time. And does your body react to what you've been doing? And you have to push through? Because it sounds like you're... Ab, um, you're naturally doing like an 18 and 6 or something like that, like an intermittent fast. Yeah, intermittent by fasting almost. Just yeah. by. Yeah, or, or like a 23 and 1. Whoa! You know, like <laughs> because like, uh, because I'm really just having wow. one. Wow. You know? Which you, and, and, and what does that usually consist of? Just, just big steak, you know? <laughs> so the, the organ, <laughs> ma- and so organ, organ meat isn't necessarily hugely inv- vital for, for that or? Not, not, not long term. I mean, you know, if you're coming from a nutritional deficit and you're eating like this, you know, nutrient deprived sort of uh, plant based Western diet or, you know, coming from, you know, background of, of, of vegetarianism. Yeah. Uh, some catching up to do, you yeah. know, and liver is very, very nutrient dense. It's, it, I mean, it is. And, but the problem is, is that it is nutrient dense. And so it can, it can have too much, right? Mm. So you can actually get hypervitaminosis. Yeah, apparently the liver king, it had steroids in his liver. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Way too much. Uh, 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 <laughs> that's that's the odds. Just bags of growth <laughs> hormones. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's it's not vital. We c- I could live off chicken or live off steak or. Well, yeah, no, you, you, you get everything you need just from fatty, fatty meat. Fatty meat. You know, you look so at is chicken, not fatty meat, hey? Not really. Yeah. You know, so that, I mean, chicken wings and the thighs oh, and the drumsticks. Yeah. The good parts. Yeah, well, that's it. Right? Yeah. Why, why is that the good part? Because yeah. it has I the find fat. breasts too dry. Yeah, well, they are because yeah. they don't have fat. And that's what we were told to eat because it doesn't have fat, right? Yeah. yeah. So chicken so breast is not the best option for. No, no. No, you want the fat. Right. Yeah, you Fine. definitely want the fat. For your fat's health really or for cutting weight or for both? Everything. Yeah. That's wow. really important. So your brain is made out of very long chain fatty acids, 20 and 22 chain fatty acids. Those don't exist in plants. We are very poor at making them. DHA, EPA, 70% of the f- solid matter of your brain is fat. 20% of that fat is DHA, right? And DHA stands for? Oh, gosh. D- is it like a... Well, it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm blanking on the yeah. uh, full chemical name, but it's, it's just a, it's a particular fatty acid Kay. that does not that exist you get from fat that, that you get from animals okay. specifically. And this is why they call fish brain food because they have a lot of DHA and EPA. Right. And, um, and so that is what our brain is, is per, uh, a big portion of it is made yeah. of. It does not exist in plants. Mm. We don't make it very well ourselves. We can make a bit of it, but we, we need more than what we're able to That's why vegans are dumber than us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we, t- we talk about that well, fat, hang on, hang fat on, stupid on. brain. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, that was the thing. There was actually a study out of <laughs> Oxford in 2008 <laughs> that actually looked at, at um, uh, compared uh, <laughs> vegans and other people and just be in a normal diet. And they found <laughs> that after five years of being vegan... That That's th- your length? That, and they were taking yearly Not MRIs. Vegan. <laughs> They're taking yearly <laughs> MRIs. And they found that after five years, their brains had atrophied by upwards of 5% Whoa. by volume. Right, wow. so you you're, you are constant. You don't just build a brain and it just stays there forever. You have to maintain it. And so what about me, vegetarian... Like what, what, were you what the impact? What, what animal products were you? Dairy? Were you eating eggs? Eggs, eggs and dairy. Eggs are great. Eggs are perfect nutrition. I've eaten a fuckload mm. of eggs. eggs. Well, there <laughs> you go. Honest. Yeah. So I mean, you could live on eggs because lots of know? fat and it's a lot of fat. And you know, like the yolk. If you just eat the yolk and no, don't eat the white, that's eighty percent calories from fat, mm-hmm. and then twenty from protein. You add the whites in there, then it's sixty forty. 
And so, but it's also a perfect protein because it's not just a matter of, of getting the essential proteins. Now, first of all, essential proteins mean that we can't make them, but we need them. But there are other proteins that we do make that we actually benefit from having more in our diet as well, yeah. you know, mm. like carnitine. And not everybody makes enough of these things as well. Like so, you know, some kids don't make enough carnitine or they don't make carnitine at all. And you have to get it from your diet. Carnitine is integral for your mitochondrial health and your brain function and your uh, brain development. You can't develop proper neurons without a, an adequate amount of carnitine. And so this is something I found because I was asking questions. I was saying, okay, if if we are carnivores and, you know, then we should see this in the data. So I said, okay, you know, uh, and I, I was looking at all these different diseases. They're all going up at the same time, like after the 1980s and we stopped eating meat, started eating more plant-based and all these diseases, you know, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, you know, even things like autism, they all increase the exact same time. And when I figured that out for autism, I was like, wait a minute, is autism diet related? Because it's going up. Mm. When did it start going up? It started going up at the exact same time all these other diseases. It seems way more up. prevalent now than it was. It like, is. And, but they say, oh, it's underdiagnosed. Underdiagnosed. It's a lazy way of explaining so it. So lazy. So this is, this is what they saying, you know, they said, oh, well, it was probably the same numbers back in the 60s and 70s. We just didn't notice. You're like, yeah, mm. because any, everyone before, born before 1986 is retarded. Yeah. <laughs> so they just wouldn't have noticed it. They're just going around <laughs> drooling all the time. Exactly. Yeah. You know, all the guys that invented the iPhone and, you know, like Tesla and all that oh, sort yeah. of shit. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, they're just idiots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you talking about? I mean, yeah. these, these guys were the pioneers. They did way more with way less, you know? Yeah. Of course mm. they noticed this stuff. You know, someone, anyone who says this, like, oh, they just didn't notice that someone had autism, clearly does not have a relative or a friend with autism. Like, mm. this is something you notice. I mean, yeah. this is this is a serious misdevelopment mm. of the brain. And, um, and, and I think it is a misdevelopment. I don't think that they're genetically supposed to develop like that. As pointed out by the fact that University of Texas A&M did a study, I was looking and saying, okay, well, if this is the case, then you should see higher rates of autism in vegans and vegetarians. And that's exactly what we find. Wow. There are much higher rates. And, and there are associative studies, but there are also causative studies. There was a study out of Texas A&M that showed that, it was that at least one of the causes of a certain type of autism is this carnitine deficiency. And some people don't make enough carnitine or don't make it at all. But this, was, this wasn't something that showed up because everyone was eating meat. Everyone was eating eggs. Is and this so they controversial? Got enough carnitine. There's not, well, it's not. I mean, this, this, is, this, is, this, factual. Is, this is absolutely factual. Mm. I can send you guys the study. It's, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, they showed causation between the two. Is and there a way to, um, with this knowledge, like if you're saying that, if they're saying it's diet-based, mm -hmm. if a child is exhibiting autism but you can fix the diet, will autism go away? It can, it can repair. And so the wow. younger you get them, the better it'll be. So, you know, when the brain's still developing, you can, you can actually reverse a lot of harm. And, and in fact, a lot of people are doing that um, by even just a ketogenic diet, just yeah. getting people, their brains running on the proper energy because your brain wants to run on ketones. Your ketones cross the blood-brain barrier and then reconstitute into fatty acids, which actually are the, some of the building, the important building blocks of your brain. Um, this is something we see in Alzheimer's as well. Um, they call, they're calling all, Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes now because of this insulin wow. resistance. And then when you switch over to a ketogenic diet, they, there was a study that looked at uh, putting people on a high-fat keto meat-based diet and they found that that had better efficacy for treating people with active Alzheimer's than every medication ever trialed, ever trialed. See, this is when it, when, it, when you're talking about food being the medicine and mm. getting rid of medications, and I know you're a doctor and you, mm. you, you prescribe medicines and, and you work in that industry, but I, that really in, it, um, appeals to me because I'm always of the elk that we can heal our body with food and we can yeah. um, prevent things from absolutely um, from with our food that's so the perfect marriage for you as a neuroscientist and what sorry is it neuroscientist or neurosurgeon oh, well i'm in neurosurgery yeah, yeah. and and this food thing how there's like a perfect overlap I think so yeah um and that brings what you just said about food being the medicine what about plants that have medicinal purposes mm -hmm. for humans is there what's that all about if the carnival well, diet doesn't want it but it can fix well, some look stuff. i mean you if you're sick, take medicine, right? Yeah. And, you know, certainly things can have medicinal properties, you know, but, you know, like we've been using food as medicine. We've been doing that for 2,500 years. Mm. You know, that was, that was a, you know, it's a quote attributed to Hippocrates. Maybe, maybe, maybe he said it, maybe he didn't, but it, or, but it's old, you know, let food be thy medicine and medicine thy food, right? Mm. So uh, your body is doing really the most of the heavy lifting here, mm. you know, even when I do, you know, we do surgery on someone, you know, I'm just, I'm just 
stitching people back together with string. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's their body that's, that's healing that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So. Wow. Well, maybe because we have taken a bit of your time. Um, it's been fucking oh, right. awesome. I'm like yeah. loving this. I'm, yeah. I'd love to have you back if you will. But because we've just touched on the surgery bit, we were talking off air about um, how I had a discectomy and, and when now I've got seven mil bulge in a spot, I don't want to get surgery. But you found a core correlation between um, going into a carnivore diet and people with fibromyalgia and any nerve pain just disappearing. Mm. Mm. So well, well, because just you branching you, this out. So maybe yeah, you're significantly it. reducing inflammation. You know, we give we give medicines for these things too, right? But I mean, yeah. here's the thing: you're, you're not going to give a bunch of painkillers and medicines if you don't have the problems, right? So you're using plants as medicine too. Right, you know, all of this has antibiotic effects. All of this has anti-cancer effects. Like, okay, great. Do you have an infection or cancer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> then why yeah. the hell are you taking antibiotics and chemo? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, like, I don't think anybody is of the opinion that chemo is good for you if you don't have cancer. Yeah. Mm, you know? Yeah. So, so. What are you doing this weekend? Why? I'm just getting a chemo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so it's just, oh yeah, this is good. You know, this is you know, anti-cancer property. It's like, yeah don't have cancer <laughs> you know so the anti-cancer wow. properties you know uh and then the thing is that every, you know, people don't understand that most chemos they're they are not just focusing on the cancer they damage the cancer you're hoping that it kills the cancer before it kills you and mm. not that doesn't always happen so uh when when it comes to my mm. gut problem sorry to detract from what no, you were talking about with delhi yeah. but my gut problem that caused me to go off meat which was I did an, an elimination diet, mm. which was uh, I had night sweats, I had gut pains, I had a few issues, ended up in hospital a couple of times. And uh, someone said, suggested, get rid of meat, <laughs> just, just see if that works. Yeah. And the pain stopped, all okay. my night sweats stopped. Eventually I realised it was my gut lining wasn't there, I couldn't break down the meat, and it was just because my body was working overtime and that was what the, the pain was. But yeah. And I put my, my, my pain down to it, I'd abused anti-inflammatories mm. and, and whatnot from football, which I'm sure it didn't play a good factor mm. in, and same with drinking and alcohol. But I then halfway through this vegetarian journey realised what I used to eat and the damage that that would have been doing mm. to my body as well. And so for me to just blame it on the... On the, yeah. on the anti-inflammatories is well, probably silly. I, I was eating horrifically. Yeah, well, that's the thing too. You know, people go vegetarian, they go vegan, and they say like, wow, I feel better yeah, because yeah. I stopped that pesky old meat. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. But what else did you do? do yeah. You keep yeah. drinking, you keep smoking, you keep eating yeah. cookies and cake and ice cream and sodas and all that stuff. Everybody that has had a benefit will all tell you like, no, 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 I don't eat out at restaurants. I cook all my food. I'm doing all whole foods. I don't eat sugar. I don't mm -hmm. drink sodas. I'm not drinking alcohol. I stop smoking. I'm like, okay, so you've done a few other things besides uh -huh. just yeah, 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 exactly. You know? So this is not a controlled experiment. You mm -hmm. haven't just dropped one thing, kept everything else the same, mm. right? And so, you know, I would argue that that's the difference that you're making and, and you actually threw the baby out with the bathwater yes. by getting rid of meat. Yeah. And because uh, we do the exact same thing. We do this elimination diet. We eliminate all these all garbage pr uh, foods yeah. and you focus on meat, not even, even, even doing carnivore, but just more meat base and you cut out all this processed mm. crap. They improve as well. The major improvement there is not eating this crap. And so that's that's my whole shtick. And the reason I stopped was because I was just like, you know, it's just like this stuff is harmful. Screw it. I'm not touching that stuff. And I defaulted into just eating meat mm. because I was not going to eat this stuff that mm. I just learned was harmful to me. Yeah. And I was just like, what the hell do I eat? You know, and I was just mm. going around like everything has plants in it. Right. So I was like eggs and meat. I'm like, great. That's what I ate. So, <laughs> you know, every few months, I was like thinking, I was like, you know, am I, am I missing some vitamins? Do I need yeah. a banana or something? Have you, know? you done your blood works? And yeah. And, and real and Fred Flintstone. Perfect. Yeah. So and you're probably the person to look at it and <laughs> be able to yeah. assess yeah. it pretty well. So Well, yeah. And, and you know, even at the time, I remember thinking, I was like, ooh, am I missing some nutrients here? You know? Yeah. And, and, and I remember thinking, I was like, well, you know, I feel good. My gums aren't bleeding. So, you know, we'll just ride <laughs> this out. You know, see what happens. And, yeah. uh, and I was fine, you know, and, uh, and I have done my, my blood subsequently. So, so you, did you accidentally pioneer the carnivore diet uh, or is someone else doing it and you took it on because board? Because you, you are no, no, followed I, by some extremely influential people in the, of which I did my little research into mm -hmm. you and like Huberman and stuff like that. They're, they're following you. You're obviously well respected in this sort of field. So, you, what, you are one of the earlier adopters of this sort of diet? Um, I mean, then, certainly. You yeah. know, I mean, and no one was talking about it. You mm. know, I, didn't, I didn't follow someone else. I just, I, it was literally just that, that one statement 
from my professor is just like, you didn't eat plants, you didn't eat salad, and plants are trying to kill you. And I'm like, right, <laughs> fuck plants. And I, was like, I remember I, I thought that exact phrase in my head. I was like, right, fuck, fuck plants. Fuck plants. And <laughs> is, is that's that, a great yeah. bumper sticker. Right? Is that a movie? Fuck plants. Well, that's a shirt. Sure. Plants are trying to kill you. Yeah, The Happening, I told you earlier, yeah. with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But is that a movie? Yes, The like, Happening. No, no like a, doc, a documentary. Oh, actually called, called plants, plants are trying to kill you. Is there a documentary? Oh, there's called? Attack of the Flying Tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> I think no, I think there's a documentary. I'll have to look at that one. Plants are trying to kill you. That's a great um, marketing. If it's like, not, that's well, let's, good, let's make yeah. a docker. Yeah. <laughs> You're our guest. <laughs> yeah. Plants well, are trying to kill you. Well, that's just sort of been sort of a, a catchphrase that goes on. And people, you know, have said that because of that that sort of anecdote. You know, yeah. Uh, that fuck I tell. plants. Yeah. That's <laughs> sick. We should make some shirts <laughs> just fuck plants. Yeah. <laughs> plants are, well, you've definitely nearly uh, converted the unconvertible. But um, <laughs> I guess, yeah, well, I've always maintained even when i was vegetarian the best i've ever felt was uh, i guess keto and i went um i basically i didn't even do keto i just said i'm not eating it I, this was all made up myself i just said i'm not eating anything in a packet right yeah. it was just vegetables fruits and and, and meat yeah. and it was largely uh, going against what you said i was largely uh, fruit and veg with mm. my meat but um i've never tried carnival so yeah. I, that was the best i've ever felt who knows i might feel fucking 10 times better oh, you than will. this yeah you will yeah um, and uh, I mean, I, I, it's not even a little difference, you know. I mean, like, I, so, so for example, so, so for that twenty-three years, I haven't been just one hundred percent strict on it because, for the first like sort of five six years, I was because I was just like yeah, fuck yeah, plants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, I was living in England, I was playing uh, rugby at a professional level, and um, it just meat wasn't as, as accessible. And a lot of it was like breaded and things like that. And I remember thinking, I was like, oh, is it that big of a deal? Because mm. it was so much more convenient mm. to get the sort of the crumbed, sort of breaded uh, stuff. And um, and it was a lot cheaper too. It was just like, it was like, okay, well, this is this is ticking all the boxes. And I was like, oh, but it's got that stuff on it. And I was like, is that big that big of a deal? You know, dose makes the poison. You, you make any sort of excuse to do something stupid. And so I started doing that. And it's just, and most of the time I was just eating meat. But every now I had these sort of like breaded, uh, crumbed, chicken drumsticks you know mm. and i sort of had those up eat, heated those up and eat them and uh but actually most of the time i was still eating just whole meats mm. and i remember like a few months into it just not feeling as as awesome as i normally would have you know i and i remember thinking to myself i was just like why don't i feel as just superhuman amazing as i normally do you know am i not working out as hard am i not pushing myself i was 25 i was like am i just old now am i just mm. over the hump i'm just dying <laughs> now you know yeah and um you know, I, I couldn't figure it out. And so, the, but the major thing that that did was it, 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 it got me out of the mindset of fuck plants, you know? Yeah. And so I started, s- little things would slip back in and all oh, I started using some, oh, like people had ketchup. I mean, we just call it sauce. It's so ubiquitous. Yeah. They all have yeah, some yeah. sauce. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like, it always means ketchup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, be at the, uh, you know, the house with a bunch of the other rugby players and it's like, oh, get some sauce, whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll have some sauce. I wasn't thinking again. This no is plants sugar, sugar. No, I, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it just sort of slipped and a bit more slipped in, a bit more slipped in. Yeah. And, and so I was still very heavily meat based, very much, you know, uh, uh, you know, whole food. I always cooked and everything like that, but it sort of slipped off of it. And, you know, I didn't feel as good. I just figured that was just some just getting older. But I, w- I could still work hard and I could still push myself. And, you know, I was getting niggling injuries and sore back and all these sorts of things. And I was just like, God, I haven't had a sore back in years. This is crazy. Mm. And I just figured that was just chalk it down to, you know, just 10 years of rugby. high-level rugby. You yeah, know? Yeah. And, like, and so that was no normal for me. And then sort of five, six years ago, uh, I came across uh, Dr. Sean Baker's interview on, on Rogan where they really talked about the carnivore diet. And my brother was telling me, he's just like, yeah, there's this guy, you know, he's an American doctor and he played rugby professionally in, in uh, New Zealand. And like he's saying, you can get all your nutrients from meat. And my instant response was just like, oh, that's weird. That can't be. But then, you know, reality sort of, you know, and my common sense sunk in and went, well, you know, I basically did that for like yeah, that's six it. years. Yeah, that's your long yeah, lost twin. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, I basically did that for like, you know, five, six years. I only ate meat. And I remember thinking, like, am I getting nutrient deficient? But I've never felt better in my entire life. And I always think back of that period. I've never felt better. I've never been in better shape. I could literally sprint a marathon yeah. and, I, and just not get tired. And I was just, I was just superhuman. And um, I was like, well, but, you know, that was the best period of my entire life. Mm. And I was doing that. So it was like, okay, well, it doesn't sound, it's not too far-fetched because I've had my own experiences with it. So I was like, and I wasn't too interested. I was just like, I don't know if I want to watch three hour thing. Yeah. And I was, I was actually doing about to go do humanitarian work in, in Bangladesh, and I had all these sorts of things. So it was actually several months before I watched this thing. So I got done with Bangladesh, 
and uh, just just, came back. just helping the poor as well yeah, and the needy. Just, just yeah. the, oh, geez, well, this guy, just a doctor, <laughs> yeah. fucking forty-three-year-old, good-looking rooster, shredded. fucking shredded, <laughs> helping, the helping poor, the poor. <laughs> just gets out some work done there. Not yeah. a dream boat yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there was an actual genocide in. Uh, in <laughs> <laughs> so, like, way to fucking <laughs> off plants or. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah. So they, they like literally killed like uh, two hundred thousand people in about a month wow. and a half. Like some wow. some like Holocaust level evil Fuck. way. Wow. And a million people fled into southern Bangladesh to get rid to get away from that. And this wasn't being publicized. It wasn't one of the sexy humanitarian crises. Yeah. It was just a real one. Yeah. 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 And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, but it was also very dangerous because like ISIS was very active in Bangladesh at the time, and they were blowing up hotel. They blew up a hotel because there was one American staying there. Whoa. And um, so you're you know, like, I'm going to Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was it was pretty pretty hairy, but um, you know, uh, I didn't didn't want to go mm. but it wasn't it it wasn't one of these highly publicized ones and and uh, people weren't going because a they didn't know about it and b uh it was super dangerous if yeah. you did know about it and um did you do an aussie accent or something to yeah. hard it? <laughs> <laughs> no i just i just went and just you know um but it uh but i you know i i sort of tried to take as many precautions as i could yeah and uh, and i really thought about it but but i figured that there's probably like a 50 50 chance i was going to die but if I didn't go, there was going to be thousands of people that wouldn't get help yeah. because there was not enough people to help. They had like they had like basically the the equivalent of like a, a pharmacy clerk mm. like seeing and treating patients Fuck. and just like giving them like whatever pill. Like, oh, okay, well this is good for headache. This is good for a fever. Yeah, and, uh, and just treating them symptomatically. Like that was the level of care that they had. There's a yeah. million people and twenty five thousand people coming every day yeah. you know and so it was very 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 uh serious it was a very it was yeah. a large humanitarian crisis at the time and so a friend of mine who works for an international organ uh charity was just like look this is the largest humanitarian crisis in the world and like we just aren't getting people over there people are like, doctors going to go for like a week i was taking time off at the time uh, to help my parents with some health issues and so like i had time and my mm. parents were doing better. I'm like, I can't, and I don't have kids. I don't, I'm not responsible for other people, you mm. know? So if I die, it's just me. And, um, and so I, I sort of couldn't justify not going mm. because, you know, if I went and I died, that was one person dying. But if I, if I didn't go, you know, there was potentially hundreds, if not m over a thousand or more people that I could help that would not get help mm. and even when i went there i was seeing i mean sometimes it could be anywhere from 30 to like 90 people a day you're just just people just coming in on a treadmill mm. and um and the carnival and diet protects <laughs> against <laughs> terrorism as well yeah. <laughs> and um well you would just be like all right here's one uh, steak yeah, for you meat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> here's a shoulder for you <laughs> and um but yeah but there would there'd be a line of like hundreds of people wow. out, out the gate wow. And so you know, you'd be seeing these people just in rapid fire. And at the end of the day, there'd still be 200 people waiting to get seen that you couldn't see. And you're there for 16 hours, you wow. know? And, um, and so, you know, those people did not get seen. So all of those people that I would see every single day, they would not have been seen if I wasn't there, yeah. right? Because they, they still wasn't enough people uh, to see everybody. So I, I thought of it that way. and I thought Such a selfless, yeah. incredible thing to do, to put your real, realistically put your yeah, own life yeah. at risk mm -hmm. to... To just help ease the pain of, of a lot of people is fucking yeah. yeah it's that's incredibly awesome. uh, honourable and yeah, yeah. it's well, something did I didn't know anything about it. So that's yeah. 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 Did you maintain carnival diet there? Or was so that's the thing. I, I didn't watch the Baker thing until after I got back. Yeah. So so I was I was I was over there doing that and um, but I was still always always very meat heavy and I, I avoided carbs and all that sort of stuff and so I was basically doing carb because like you know uh, every morning sort of there'd be like a big stuff that we put out and I was, I was like well this, this may be the only time i eat today mm. yeah. and so they'd have like you know eggs and some meat things actually bangladesh they eat a lot of meat there so i was able to just i would just pile up you know a couple of plates with just a buttload of eggs and meat Sick. and and, and i just just go out and Sweet. eat and then like sort of later i was just getting sort of worn down and i was just like well maybe i should carbo load and eat a bunch of carbs and so i did that and i actually physically noticed myself i was like i was actually still maintaining pretty lean muscular physique mm. when i was just eating meat and i was eating carbs like getting more chubby and pudgy i'm like oh this isn't good yeah, yeah. and so it's sort of cutting out the carbs but and the inflammation went away 
when the yeah. carbs went away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But going on what you said there, and that, that's been common feedback from a few people. I remember Jordan Peterson specifically talking about his experiences with it on Rogan, and he said the biggest negative he found was when you went away from it, mm-hmm. you you had a very severe reaction to it instead yeah. of the, the mild reactions that we're all sort of, I guess, accustomed to or mm, adapted to, which is probably not a good thing. Mm. That links back to the start of the episode yeah. saying our bodies. Yeah, not used to it, yeah. so it comes. Well, I mean, it's, it's understandable, though, isn't it? Right, because if you if you if you stop introducing a toxin to your body, your body's going to stop, you know, sort yeah. of building up defenses against your body's very very efficient. You mm. know, it's not going to just waste its time and energy making a bunch of defenses against something that's not there, right? And mm. uh, so, just like alcohol, right? You know, you drink this alcohol. Is my next question. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> you, know, you, you build up a tolerance to alcohol, yeah. right? If you're if you're drinking regularly, you'll build up a tolerance. You'll take more alcohol to get the same effects. More cocaine, more heroin, more spinach. So I'm guessing you <laughs> don't. Do you, not <laughs> <laughs> you don't put spinach <laughs> and heroin into many Just conversations together. Rack, <laughs> racking up some <laughs> some lime greens. Um, yeah. So you don't drink, I'm assuming. Very rarely. And if you do, is it just straight shots of vodka? That's it. Yeah. 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 So I'll keep vodka it and water. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. And so, you know, I mean, if I want that poison effect, you know, yeah. I'll, just, I'll just go straight forward. I don't want all the stuff that comes with, like, with the wine and, and beer and stuff like that. There's yeah. tons of other things. It's been such it. a driving motivator for me recently, lessening the amount of alcohol I've been it's having. A huge it's, just, yeah. it's just impacted everything. It's motivated yeah. me to be healthier, f- like fitter, do more weights. Uh, yeah. even, even the water I drink now is filtered with minerals and mm. it's not just fucking tap water out yeah. of it. If I'm putting all this effort into, you know, not even... I'm trying to find uh, deodorants that don't have aluminium in them, for fuck's yeah, sake. Right. So, so, like, I can't find a good one, to yeah. be honest. Uh, that one that doesn't make me smell like a hippie. But um, <laughs> it's patchouli, if I'm yeah. putting all of this effort... <laughs> just into, get some yeah, meat and just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I'm putting in all this effort into trying to be the best version of myself and, and whatnot, why would I want to yeah. drink I've more alcohol? I haven't drank for two weeks. I'm trying to do the whole Fringe Festival yeah. um, sober. My inflammation in my gut's already just fully gone down. Yeah. I'm doing it to help my back as well. So it's um Make a huge yeah, it's difference. Pretty yeah. noticeable. Surely the what about the, the alcohol? diet will help with the back. Yeah. 100%. Would that That's like what the, I'm the try to do. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. So was, yeah, I've, I've had I've had a lot of patients, you know, sometimes uh, you know, and, and Dr. Baker, I mean this is how we sort of came across this was when he was he was getting people ready to do joint replacements and he used to say, Hey, why don't you go on this he was just keto back then. Just why don't, why don't you go on this and see how it goes, you help you lose weight, it's safer for surgery, all these sorts of things. And they go after a couple of months, they go, hey, doc, you know, like my knee doesn't hurt anymore. Like, I don't think I need surgery. He's like, that's awesome. So he started looking into it more and trying this with more patients. And he found that he, he was, uh, you know, averting people from needing major joint replacements and major surgery. So he thought as a doctor who gives a shit about people, mm. this is a good thing. Yeah. And his, his hospital and practice was just like, well, what the hell? You're turning away money. Yeah. That's great. Right. Yeah. That's and so annoying. Yeah. Yeah, you're turning away money for the for pharmaceuticals the and for the surgery yeah. and, and for the care. Yeah. But, oh, well, yeah. you're looking after the patient, which is surely what's most important. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Gary Fetke here in Australia, you know, he's down in Tasmania, he got into, into trouble as well with APRO because he was doing the same thing. He was saying, "Hey, you know, you go on a keto keto diet like this can help you." And so he was act. He was like, I, mean, "I don't know why Apple's pissed off about this." He's literally saving the system millions of dollars a year yeah. in saved surgeries. You know, you'd think that they would want that, yeah. but they they came after him. They tried to, to take away his license and things like it's that. It's fucked because that feeds conspiracy theories as well. Mm. Things like that just feed all the nonsense conspiracy theories. But then the ones that end up being yeah. true. It damages. That's insane. That is insane. So if you got to fuck back at home, just start eating meat. So <laughs> yeah. That's what and I'm going to do. And don't eat the other things, right? Because the yeah. other things will cause harm. They'll increase inflammation. And just by not eating carbohydrates and sugar and being in ketosis, the higher levels of ketones actually suppress inflammation as well. And you're eliminating all the things that will cause inflammation. Like, I don't get sore after I work out. That pisses people off. You're, you're <laughs> a liar. And I was like, well, you know, try it. You yeah. know, you'll yeah. see. You get all this inflammation out of your body. You, you won't get that soreness, stiffness, and swelling. Uh, that is the plant's way of telling you to fuck off. Yeah. Like, Don't eat me. I'm going to make you feel bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? What about coffee and tea? Like, coffee, can we use that to a benefit or is that a poison? It's a plant. Yeah, I know, but... Yes. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love coffee. I love school. I love alcohol, you know? Well, yeah, I do it. What about the alcohol that the Inuits make from a seagull that they leave 
Have you seen, have you seen that? <laughs> from a seagull. Yeah, no, they no. ferment a seagull over that the time. Ferment a seagull. A whole seagull. Disgusting. And then they shot, yeah, it's, uh, this guy <laughs> on the taco, he did it and just yakked on the ground. <laughs> they knocked back a, a fermented seagull. <laughs> oh, my God. Because that's I, not from a plant. No, that's true. But, it, but you know, just alcohol itself, yeah. is obviously. But it, it's fermenting, you know, carbohydrates and things oh, like that, right? Damn it. One, no um, hack. <laughs> one other thing I was interested in was the cycling of, of what we should be eating because through – you know, evolution through millions of years, we've not had the same season. So food mm. would change from season to season. Does that mean what we should be eating and what meats we should be eating if we're on a carnivore diet? Should that change and cycle? Generally, generally animals are always available. Might be different animals depending on the season, you know, this migration routes and things like that. With the Native Americans, you know, it, it was very seasonal when they had buffalo available. It came through once a year. Yeah. And they'd scare over, you know, a few hundred members. Uh, over that, and that would they would preserve that for the rest of the year, and that would keep them over until the mm. herd came through again. And um, you know, and it might be that um, you know the Inuits. I mean, there's basically just one season in the North Pole. Yeah, cold, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so but yeah, that's the preserved meat, I guess. So that's yeah. yeah. And, and they're eating seal and polar bear and, and fish and things like that. So they eat they eat different amounts of polar bear, or seal, or fish depending on the season and things like that as well. But it's always meat. You know, it's always yeah. animals. And then. Yeah, can't mm. grow many crops up there. No, uh -huh. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. and uh, and and your know, crops would be seasonal as well. You know, people talk, oh, well, fruit's really good for you. It's just like not all year. You would never have had this access to this stuff That's all so year. That's so true. And uh, and all the produce and fruits that we have now, a, they're available all year, which they normally wouldn't be. And also, they are all bioengineered. None mm, of these things yeah. existed even a few hundred years ago, let yeah. alone thousands of years ago. Mm. You know, so even if we were designed to eat some plants, which which which, which plants? Mm. Because yeah. none of the plants we eat now what existed a thousand years ago. Nuts, no good. So nuts are are a seed, right? Yeah. Beans are a seed. Grains are seeds. This, and you know, like the rice, and we were talking about earlier, yeah. this is generally where we find a higher concentration of poisons because a seed is a plant's baby. And everything protects its babies more than anything, right? So this is where you, you generally find a higher concentration. This mm. is why, like, like uh, um, cyanide in apples, and 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 in the seed in particular, yeah. right? And in uh, almonds as well. Damn There's it. cyanide in almonds, and so uh, 400 to 800 grams of almonds can be a lethal dose of of cyanide in an adult. What? Yeah. And so, and I, I love is that a common <laughs> cause of death? Death <laughs> by almonds? I wouldn't think so. No, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult to pack down all that, yeah. that almonds. But, you know, I've had like, you know, a, a kilo bag of almonds mm. from Costco before, mm. before I knew all this. I'm just sitting there just chucking these things back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like eating like half the bag. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, like half, half the death. Of, yeah, like half a, like a lethal dose of this stuff, wow. you know. And uh, you know, I'm a bigger guy, so maybe it would take more. But it was just like, that is nuts. Yeah. And, um, that is nuts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and um, so, you know, uh, there's this other things that there. have cyanide, right? And uh, my cassava root. That's that's a major staple yeah. in in uh, the developing worlds in the tropics and things like that. That um, is the primary calorie source for 500 million people around the world. Mm. Uh, it's the third most important calorie source in the tropics entirely. Right? It has a lot of cyanide. So there's sweet cassava and there's bitter cassava. The bitter cassava will kill you dead mm. with the amount of cyanide. You have to prepare it in a certain way to sort of eliminate that out. The same with this, you should do that with the sweet as well, but you're not going to get rid of all of it, mm. right? So we have to chemically process these things. You know, this is also another clear example that we're not designed to eat this stuff because we're not designed to eat this stuff because mm. we have to do some sort of chemical process to it in order to detoxify it and make the, the nutrients more available. I guess the argument would be that we're smart enough to be able to do that. Yeah, but we weren't two million years ago. Yeah. We had these processes in the last couple hundred years. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? And so, you know, we didn't evolve on that. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? So we were smart enough to figure it out subsequently. Yeah. Right? But, you know, just, you know, chimps in the forest can't do that. They yeah. can't They can't soak something in lye for 24 hours and then cook it under certain conditions. You know, they're not going to yeah. figure that out. And, and so we can't expect to our body something. to catch up in, in a couple of hundred years. of. No. Yeah. Is meat better for men than women or does it have oh, the same yeah. effect? Like, mm. will, it, will it increase our testosterone and that woman's estrogen or anything like that? Or is it... It'll, it'll optimize both. Yeah, okay. Right, so... You know, it'll optimize our horm hormones, testosterone mm -hmm. and estrogen. will also do that for them as well. Wow. Um, so it's, it's, you know, you look at every single example of animal species in the wild. Males and females eat the same thing. Yeah. You know, the children and adults and elderly eat the same thing, except when you're, you 
or um, breastfeeding, right? Yeah. So mammals will be on milk. As soon as they're weaned from milk, they eat what the adults eat, and they eat that for the rest of their life, Yeah, male or female, right? Yeah. You might eat more if you're a bigger male than you would if you're a smaller female, but like hyenas, they, the women are generally yeah, larger. Yeah, they got the bigger dicks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or yeah. the faux dicks. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, you know, the, yeah, every, everything's the same. So, you know, people say, well, well, you know, some things are better. And this is the big argument I heard a lot is that, you know, well, some, uh, some things are better. Everyone's different. You know, you're depending on your blood type, you might be a vegan or yeah, herbivore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's nonsense. I mean, let's be honest. Like, you know, one protein difference on your red blood cells is not going to fundamentally change your entire digestive system. Mm. And you're not all of a sudden, like, if you have, you know, type A blood, there's supposed to be, you're supposed to be an herbivore if you're mm. type A blood. I'm like, what the what kind of sense does that make? Yeah. You know, so those type A blood, you know, lions, they're just supposed to eat grass. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and so, uh, you know, how is how is being, I'm type A. You know, yeah. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to do better without any meat. I'm like, mm. well, no. Yeah. yeah. It's the ab- absolute opposite. And like, you know, what about that? It, what about having a, a different protein on my blood, on my, just my red blood cells is going to give me the ability to, to digest, to digest f- uh, fiber. Yeah. Well, it hasn't, yeah. you know, so there's that. But, um, so those, that's a sort of a silly one. I don't know why people put credence into that, but there's the argument that, you know, some people do better on a, on a plant-based or this or that, and everyone's different and everyone, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't make any biological sense, mm. right? I challenge anyone, anyone listening to this, anyone at all, to find any examples in nature where two members of the same species have different optimal diet. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, now you may be better able to process, you know, inappropriate diets, right? Mm. Like Europeans yeah. are going to be better at like eating grains than the Native Australians and Native Americans. Mm. Mm. But that that's not optimal for anyone, right? So if you're less susceptible to lead poisoning than I am, mm. that doesn't make <laughs> lead good for you. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. right? Eat some lead. Yeah, it just makes it less bad for you. Yeah. Right? But it's still bad, right? Yeah. It's still causing harm. It's just causing less harm to you than it would to me. Yeah. Right? And I mean, that, and that's the thing, too. You know, the thing about ancient Rome, when they did get lead poisoning, they had the, they had the pipes and plumbing made out of lead. And they all were getting low-grade lead poisoning, and everyone was getting sick. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of them thought, well, this is just normal. Your hair is supposed to bleed when you're 24. <laughs> <laughs> That's not normal. Well, witchcraft. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's just like, well, say, oh, it's normal. But then they figured out, like, oh, shit, actually, we're being poisoned. Like, it's these, it's these pipes. Yeah. And they figured it out, and they changed the pipes, right? It's incredible that they figured it out without any chemistry sets or, or scientific Yeah, yeah. Well, look, dude, they, 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 they were way smarter than we are. Yeah. I, I swear to God. You know, they, they didn't have the same technologies we did. Less but, like, the legal system in ancient Rome is more complex than, than in, even in America today. Yeah. You know, like they, we have genetically been the same for about 300,000 years. We've had the same capacity for thought, language, and, and, you know, and emotion and everything. And yeah. And, and, and technology and figuring things out and, yeah. it, you know, that, that we do now probably more so because back then they were eating a lot more meat and their brains were larger. You know, and they had to do, again, a lot more with a lot less. They didn't have all the technology. They didn't have an iPhone. They could just look up the weather. They had to understand the seasons. Yeah. They had to understand the patterns of the sun and the moon. And they go through these 80-year cycles. And they go like uh, Ben Franklin. He got, uh, he was an inventor. He got, became very wealthy because of that. He grew up very poor. And, um, and, uh, and he looked at, like, people in England, things like that, had sort of social welfare. And he was just like, I never want to be like that because they're taking away the impetus to get the hell out of poverty. You can just you can be comfortable in poverty uh, when a you're on, on a welfare system. Whereas yeah. just like he's like, I never want that. I never want to be. I don't ever want someone to, to make me comfortable in a, in a bad situation. Yeah. And so he, he strived to get out of that. It's a, it's the sting of poverty that helps you get out of poverty. Yeah. You know. And Midland so, Monterey boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um and so he invented a lot of things. One of the things that he did was an almanac, and this thing would predict on. June 6th, this is when, this is what the weather will be. This is when the rain's going to stop. This is when you start planting your crops. This is when, and it, because they could, f- they knew they were in tune with nature and they were in tune with the cycles of the sun and, and, and the seasons so well, they could predict the weather decades. Yeah, our weathermen suck. They do. <laughs> we need yeah. Benjamin Franklin up yeah. there. Yeah, and he's doing this stuff in the 1700s. Wow. Right? 
And we've gotten so, so distracted with technology that we've just become reliant on it. We don't actually know things. Yeah, we're so I'm going to order my Caesar salads now, like the Romans, just meat. My Caesar <laughs> salad is just the bacon <laughs> and the you chicken, just nothing just else. Stop ordering everything and just yeah. cook it yourself. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, we have become so detached from the natural world yeah. and all that. We've become so reliant on technology that we, yeah, we don't. Is that a we are becoming dumber in that we sense. Yeah. We're very much becoming dumber. Is that a special interest of yours, his going through history and seeing how yeah, that works? Well, I've always, you just yeah, I've always been very interested in that. Yeah. I've always been very interested in like ancient Greece and things like that. I've loved like the old mythology and the old classics. I uh, just started, like and I just <laughs> messaged Delby last, last night, night, just yeah. started watching a documentary series on the Roman Empire and the fall of it. Oh, and yeah. And it, and it suckered me right in because it starts, I, I, the gladiator sort of theme story mm-hmm. of that, um, which I now realise was a little bit <laughs> pumped up for, yeah. uh, for dramatic purposes. But yeah, oh, I fucking love it. That yeah. whole, the, yeah, learning about the fall of the well, Roman Empire. Maybe we can do a, an ancient Greece and an ancient one with Dr. Anthony as mm. well. I want to talk about neurosurgery, but uh, neuroscience as well, but that's we can do another pod if you'd, yeah, if yeah, you'd yeah, like we'll to come get back. back because sure. I fucking am really enjoying this. Well, uh, I'll, I'll finish with one more question then. Um, so we talk about meat and the salt, oil. Um, so... Extra virgin olive oil. It's a plant. Mm-hmm. Where do we sit with oils and how we yeah. cook our food, or do we add the t- oils, or, or is it just the lard that comes from the meat? What's the yeah, really just animal fats. Yeah. So, so the when you take the oil out of the plant, they become quite unstable and they actually break down into very oxidative, uh, very inflammatory byproducts. And so that's a problem if it's if it's straight out like the extra virgin olive oil straight off the press and use it that day. Less bad, right? Because it's 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 more stable, but it breaks down. It will be breaking down at all times, and this is why you get like you know olive oil that's like you know this sort of a bit rancid. It tastes more bitter. Okay. Mm. Again, that yeah, bitter taste is, is should be warning you about something, and um, that's because it's broken down into these products. So when you cook with it, it gets a lot worse. So um, I don't know if you guys take in chemistry, but like um, in chemistry, like just high school chemistry. Uh, yeah, we was a science teacher, so yeah. perfect. oh, perfect. Yeah, so so you know, so so every ten degrees Celsius that you you increase a reaction, you increase you double the reaction rate. Yeah, right. So that's happening for the degradation of these plant oils as well, right? Because that's a that's a chemical reaction. It's degrading, right? Yeah. And then you heat it up, and that speeds up that reaction, right? So you go from twenty five STP to thirty five, you double that reaction rate. So you go up to like from twenty five to two fifty five you've increased the reaction rate by 16 million times, mm. right? So you're going to break it all. You're going to, you're going to finish that reaction to completion very quickly. Mm-hmm. That's going to be very, very, very uh, pro-inflammatory and, you know, it's going to be more damaging. My body must be hot during sex because I finished the completion way yeah. quicker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sorry, I was just hot. <laughs> just my body temperature's gone yeah, up maybe 16 just million just some times. Hot sex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is some friction, Delby. Yeah. You're going so fast. You, so your olive oil is now full of the bad shit yeah, as opposed right. to... Because I heard olive oil was anti-inflammatory. Oh, it depends on when you catch it, right? Yeah, right. So, so that's the thing too. There's a lot of cherry picking. Right. Mm. So, you know, they'll look at this. Oh, look, it has this thing in there. And that's been shown in some epidemiological nonsense study to be possibly maybe anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, what else is in it? Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, there's a yeah. there's, there's hundred thousand other chemicals in there. Yeah. Right. What do those do? One there's just one anti-inflammatory thing. And there's one antioxidant in there or yeah. maybe a few, maybe a hundred, you know, whatever. But there's thousands wow. of other things. You know, plants make close to or more than a million different defense chemicals to stop you from eating them, right? Think about this way. You get lost out in the bush and you run out of food, right? Can you just eat any random plant? No. 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 Why not? Because they'll kill you. you. They'll kill you. They'll make you very sick or even kill you because they are poisonous. Most plants will kill you. Most Mm. plants will kill most animals, even pure herbivores. Mm. There's an entire field of veterinary medicine, large animal livestock medicine, where it's all about the different diseases that animals get when they start eating the wrong plants. They wow. get stuck in it. They normally don't do this in the wild, but you get stuck in a pasture. They run out of you know grazing material. They run out of feed. They'll just start eating random ass things because they're they're starving. Yeah, you know, and they can get very sick, or they'll get into something. Someone will get mixed in. There are diseases, you know, like big head, limp neck, you know, crazy cow syndrome. You know, sounds like something you call your ex. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> your big crazy head, limp cow, neck, crazy yeah. cow. Yeah, <laughs> and and these are actual diseases, but they're not diseases. They're they're. It's understood that that when a cow eats this, they'll get big uh, head. You know, and they'll get you know big tongue and then crazy cow. I'm looking syndrome. for the big dick plant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Just need to eat that. <laughs> 
And, wow. uh, yeah, so that's that's the thing. So, so we have this entire field of veterinary science yeah. that understands that you eat the cow eats the wrong thing or the animal eats the wrong thing. They will get a specific disease that has a name. What we need to recognize as doctors and as people is that diabetes is one of those diseases. Yeah. Heart disease is one of those diseases. You know, autoimmune issues like you know rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's, gout, the multiple sclerosis, all of these things are like crazy cow syndrome and yeah. big uh, big head and all these sorts of things. These are diseases that only come about from eating the wrong thing. They don't exist otherwise. Wow. And that's why I think that these so-called chronic diseases that are the, m- the majority of, of diseases that we treat nowadays as doctors are not diseases per se, but toxicities and malnutrition, as I said. So you're, you're eating the wrong thing and things are going wrong in your body, which we know for a fact happens. Mm. And, you know, going back to the, the Rome, you know, they had they had lead poisoning. They had to figure that out. They didn't know what was going on. I think we're in our ancient Rome, our lead pipes. Our mm. lead pipes are vegetables and fruit and grains and eating things that we're not supposed to. And we're just living in it. Yeah. So it just looks normal. And yeah. this is just how you age. And that's just normal. You get diabetes. You get overweight. You get heart disease. That's just a thing. Yeah. It's not a thing. It doesn't need to be a thing. And, you know, so we are in that now and we just have to get out of that mindset that this is just a normal part of aging and it just happens. It doesn't need to happen. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is from eating the wrong thing. And if you get rid of it, it goes away. So it's your body's natural response to ingesting something that doesn't agree with your body yeah. in the first place. Our so carnival uh, diet doesn't cherry pick the facts. It doesn't cherry pick anything. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking smash it. So Lizzo shouldn't be spreading body positivity. She should just be eating meat. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, the thing is, is that like... Um, the natural state of human beings is healthy. Yeah. yeah. You know, we shouldn't be sick. No. That's an abnormal state. Yeah. Mm. But now we've normalized ill health. And you have this body positivity sort of stuff. I mean, yeah. I, you shouldn't, you shouldn't make people that? you shouldn't make people feel bad about anything. You shouldn't yeah. try to yeah. track them down. Everyone's going through their struggles, you know. Um, and and also they've been lied to their whole damn life. Mm. You know? I talked to so many people. I've talked to I've talked to to PhDs in nutrition who were overweight and unhealthy following the exact (laughs) things that they learned in their PhD. (laughs) And most of them don't figure it out. Some of them do and go like, well, Well, what the hell? You know, I'm doing this by the book and I'm getting more overweight and more and less healthy. And so it's like, so this has to be wrong. Yeah. And so there are a number of nutritionists, PhDs, uh, Dr. Sarah Zaldivar, she teaches nutrition at um, at Florida State, like Dade, uh, Dade College of Florida State, Florida State, Dade, Florida anyway. Uh, she's a PhD in nutrition. She yeah. found that exact thing. She was getting more, more and more uh, unhealthy, and she was just like, "Okay, this has to be wrong." So she started looking into it, and she came across a carnivore diet too. Bang! Total change. Now, now she's healthy as hell, feeling great, reverse all these issues, and so you know, there's more and more people coming to this and realizing it. But you know, it's um, it's a weird know. propaganda war, like a f- un- unintentional food propaganda war. Yeah, like. This information. That it, that's it. And so, you know, you're getting... So so after the 1977 USDA declaration, which we know is bullshit, right? We have hard evidence of that. It's what, published what was data. The, what was the declaration? So that, that, that cholesterol caused heart disease. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, yeah, and saturated fat free cholesterol. Stop yeah. eating it. This changed the world, right? And we know it's bullshit. It's published as a matter of record. This is a historical fact. We have their words saying it's bullshit. Yeah. And uh, Ansel Keys is another douchebag that sort of yeah. was paid off by the, by the sugar companies as well. We um, needed Project Veritas back then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of like one yeah. later. And so so since nineteen seventy seven, you know, people did actually listen. You know, they're saying that, well, people are just fat because they don't listen to doctors. Like, no, the problem is they uh, did yeah. listen to doctors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So you look at the consumption data, um, from the nineteen seventies to current day, we in, in America, we reduced our red meat consumption by over thirty three percent, reduced Fat cholesterol consumption by over 33%. Increased fruits and vegetables by, you know, 30, 40% respectively. Increased grains as well. Increased, like, tripled the amount of sugar we were eating. Mm. Tripled the amount of high fructose corn syrup we were eating. And tripled the amount of seed oils we were eating. Right? What happened? Yeah. The obesity rate tripled. Heart disease tripled. Stroke rate tripled. Cancer rates tripled. Type 2 diabetes, autoimmune disorders, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, even autism, as we were saying before, they all increased exponentially. They almost didn't exist before then, not because people didn't notice it, but because they they weren't there. Mm. You know, you have someone with Crohn's, they're they're shitting blood 23 times a day. You know about it. Yeah. Mm. You know, that's not getting underdiagnosed. That's retarded. Mm. You know, so like this is, this is, 
absolutely yeah. a true uh, increase in this prevalence. And it's a massive increase. Type 2 diabetes increased by a factor of 5.8, mm. you know, in a matter of 30 years. How's See, that? How's impossible. that genetic? Yeah. That has to be environmental. And the 19, before the 1990s, they called type 2 diabetes adult onset diabetes because only adults would get it. Mm. Fatty liver disease was only caused by alcohol. They didn't know of any other cause. They didn't see any Fuck. other cause. And then in the 90s, there were a bunch of kids that were 10 years old getting adult onset diabetes and having fatty liver disease. And they were like, I remember this as a kid looking at this, uh, at this news program. This lady was shocked. She was like news anchor. She was just like, how, how is this possible? Yeah. Yeah. How is he getting adult onset diabetes? He's not an adult. Yeah. He's only 10. And he's, he's getting alcohol, you know, alcoholic, you know, fatty I'm liver disease. With but but he's, he's never had alcohol. He's 10. This yeah. is what happens when profits are prioritized over the benefit of all. And well, we see it in every aspect of yeah. life now. Well, but also when people don't use their damn brain, mm. you know, because instead of thinking, it's like, okay, something's changed. This isn't genetic. You know, yeah. what, what, what is different now than yeah. it was before? Well, we're eating less meat, we're eating less that, so it can't be that. Probably this was happening the whole time. We just didn't notice it. Yeah. yeah. You know, we were just diagnosing type, you know, uh, a juvenile diabetes instead of, because they were a kid, we just assumed it was juvenile diabetes. No, this is bullshit. Yeah. These are entirely different mechanisms, you know. You're making insulin in, when you're type 2 diabetic for, for, you know, for the first part. Anyway, so, you know, you can, you can, you know, which, you know, you're getting type 1 or type 2. That's nonsense. Yeah. So they just renamed it type 2 diabetes mm. and, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease instead of using their Jeez. brain for even one second. And think, okay, what changed? So massive things changed. So people actually did listen, and they and they've gotten fatter and sicker and less healthy. So I don't, you know, you know, body positivity in the sense that like it's, I don't, re I really don't think it's most of these people's fault. Mm. You know, people are just just leaning into it and just just drinking and eating things that that are that even they recognize as harmful. And just, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Okay. Well, that I mean, you're doing something against your best interests. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and you're knowingly doing that, but. Most people aren't in that category. Most people are actually trying their best. They're eating salads. They're starving themselves. They're doing all these things, and they're just gaining weight and gaining weight. And then you get some of these people that, that really don't understand biochemistry, doctors, nutritionists. They say, it's just calories in, calories out. That's the only thing that happens here. Just eat less calories. And this guy's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm just eating salads. I'm not mm. eating all these calories, but I'm still gaining weight. And it's like, you're just a liar. You're full of it. You're <laughs> obviously eating more calories uh, then you're then you're you're putting out and it's yeah. just like well what the hell am I supposed to do yeah and so they actually you know destroy their metabolism destroy their health trying to lose weight you know the the biggest loser that that uh, show um, you know should have been the producers called the biggest losers you yeah. know because like they were harming these people's health and no they lost weight yeah but they actually checked their metabolism they found it just destroyed it it was just in the boots wow. you know and then they checked them six years after the show Met metabolism had never recovered wow. You know, and so that may be because they made serious damage to it, or maybe that they learned those stupid habits and continued them, mm. which kept suppressing their their metabolisms. But you know that you shouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't yeah. have to destroy your metabolism and your health just to get a certain appearance. You know, when when you're eating meat, when you're eating fat, your metabolism goes up. So when I stopped eating, you know, uh, when I get by, got back from Bangladesh and I finally watched Dr. Baker's um, podcast on Rogan. You know, I was I, within five minutes. I'm like, this guy's more right than he knows, you know, because I knew all the research about, you know, cholesterol being bullshit and, you know, f plants being bad for you, sugar really being a key marker, cholesterol not being an issue. And I was just like, I was like, I, I you know, this is, this is, there's something here. And it thought back to when I was doing this uh, in my early 20s. I was just like, fuck, I knew plants were trying to kill me. <laughs> fuck <laughs> plants. <laughs> we should call this episode fuck plants yeah. <laughs> <Fuck> <laughs> Anthony. Hell. and i just i just i just threw him out and you know i at that point i was i was trying to lose weight to get back into rugby and my my team in seattle had just gone professional and um and i wanted to play with them but i had already committed to uh, going to bangladesh but i'd come back sort of uh you know sort of partway through the season i was like okay well maybe i can get into shape and yeah. start start playing and um and i wasn't really feeling great i wasn't feeling good i was i wasn't eating any carbs and um, I was just eating a lot of greens, like spinach, kale, and broccoli, and and some lean meat. Mm. And I just wasn't feeling great. I was always tired. I didn't have energy. Um, you know, I was, I was you know trying to work out and go. But I'm like, ah, I'm not ready to, to play yet. Yeah, at the moment, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and then I you know, came across that. I'm like, right, screw this. I threw out all the f dirty yard waste <laughs> out of the fridge, and like. Um, 
and just start eating more meat. <laughs> Yardwise, yeah. there's well, plants and vegetables. That's, that's it, you know? It was just like a bunch yeah. of yard clippings. You, yeah. know? you put it in a bag and sell it to someone. Yeah. That's the thing, you know, the vegans say, you know, it's just like, oh, these plants are so good for you. And it's not, it's like, why are you. Why are you going to the store? Why don't you just, just eat your yard waste, you know? Like, <laughs> go to the park and just, you know, just eat, just get a bunch of leaves and just randomly eat them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If we're just in the Garden of Eden, you know, yeah. and it's all plants are good for you, like, go ahead. You know, yeah. try, make a salad out of hemlock. See what God, happens. I misbelieve them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, Fuck. um... You know, so, so you I started just, feeling better. I started feeling way better. So I stopped eating the greens and I started eating way more meat. So I actually, I went from eating maybe, you know, this much. People can't see you probably, but I don't even know. Maybe Size like, of a cup, a holder, a coaster. Yeah, yeah like you know, 200 grams mm. of, of meat a day, lean meat. Mm. And the rest of it was just greens, mm. right? And I was just trying to slim down, basically starve myself. Sounds shape. healthy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it gives you a yeah. The appeal, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so... Uh, but I wasn't feeling great. I wasn't really losing weight. My weight was fluctuating all over the place with like water weight. And then when I just like got rid of the plants and I just like just ate meat until I was satiated eating fatty like ribeyes, I was eating big old like kilo, kilo and a half steaks every day from 200 grams, you know? And I lost 10 kilos in wow. 10 days. Wow. You know? And wow. Then and I like easily quintupled yeah. my calories. So that's and you nonsense. ate ten kilos because it was a kilo a day. No, or more. So you yeah. ate ten kilos and lost ten kilos. Yeah, exactly. That yeah. is that doesn't compute. Wow. Out. Yeah. Well, that's it. Wow. Because now, it, did it take you? Oh, I guess you it, you sort of eased into not eased into it, but no, you do it head you, first. But yeah, but I was already doing keto. Yeah, you were, yeah. But I wasn't. I wasn't consciously doing keto. I wasn't doing. Oh, I'm gonna be on yeah. a keto diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wasn't eating carbs. Did you experience the diarrhea that some people complain? No. Of? No. Yeah. No, none of that. But so some people do experience some that. Some people what, what's do. What's that? Is that just literally your body detoxing, getting rid of all the shit? It's generally three things, mm -hmm. most commonly, like 95%, um, especially when you're starting. Um, usually, people are still drink coffee. Coffee's a laxative. <sighs> and so when you stop eating all this, like, plant fiber and all that sort of stuff that will, like, slow you down, and probably coffee's the only thing keeping things moving, mm. you know, uh, that looks regular to you. You get rid of all that garbage. Now you're eating drinking the coffee, you don't really have much there because you're absorbing 98% mm. of, of the meat that you eat. This stuff's just firing out like a fire hose, you know? So, like, so most commonly is people are still drinking coffee. Next is they're using artificial sweeteners, usually in the Fuck. coffee. Right? <laughs> Ooh, this is my morning routine. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do the sweet. I heard that's coffee. bad for your gut. It is. is stevia? Yeah. No, stevia's a plant still as well, isn't it? It's a plant, yeah. yeah. And Fuck. so all the, all the different sort of alternative sweeteners, they act as laxatives, right? <laughs> and uh, I think it's called di uh, you know, gut dysbiosis and things like that yeah. as well. So you really don't want this stuff. And it can absolutely cause diarrhea. If you're not doing that and you're only eating meat and only eating, drinking water and that's it and you're still getting loose stools, it's almost always because you're eating a lot more fat than your body can absorb mm. because your body has a limited capacity for absorbing fat. You make bile and that, that emulsifies fat and you absorb it that way. Once you run out of bile, it's very difficult for your body to absorb fat. It can do like some medium chain fatty acids, uh, but a small percentage of them, right? Yeah. So this is actually in the Australian board. I was I was very impressed with that uh, when yeah, I was wow. I was taking these boards. It was like one of the questions was just like you know it's like how much can your body absorb without bile or sort of shit. I was like, well, I know the answer. Do you? Nice. And like the answer is just like and then and that was the correct answer. It's very difficult for your body to absorb fat without bile, so it goes out. Yeah. Right. And so if you are not eating enough bile, um, fat and by enough fat, I mean as much bile as you have av available, because, again, our bodies are very efficient. They're not just going to make bile for no damn reason. It's making that much bile because it wants that much fat. Mm. Right. It's just going to make a random amount of bile. You yeah. know, you have four organs working in concert just to absorb fat. This is a very, very well controlled system. You know, I mean, your stomach's included in this, but, you know, your liver makes bile. Your gallbladder stores it and concentrates it. So if you're not eating fat or whatever for a week or two, like most carnivores probably won't, mm. you know, you're getting a kill once a week or, you know, one or, or longer. Um, you need to have that concentrated bile. It normally physiologically will concentrate up to 20 times uh, of the amount that it, that it would otherwise. And, uh, and some people may concentrate even more. These are probably people that are susceptible to gallstones or not eating any fat. You'll notice that people who don't eat fat are the ones who get gallstones because they're just storing this bile and it's just, it's just concentrating and concentrating and concentrating. What happens to any concentra hyper-concentrated solution at rest? It has to... Forms precipitate, yeah. forms crystals, right? So you get, you get you know, a super-saturated 
solution of salt or whatever, and you introduce something, it all yeah. turns into crystals, right? Yeah. That's so that's why happened. I got kidney stones. Yes. At fucking age twenty five. Uh, that'd be from oxalates as well. Okay. You know, tons of oxalates. So like in, in especially like um, you know spinach and things like that. Tons and tons and tons of oxalates. And oxalates bind. So these are anti nutrients, right? There's a lot of anti nutrients. Another way that plants defend themselves is by binding nutrients. Uh, permanently, and you can't break them down. So phytic acid will bind to all these different minerals and things like that, and uh, will strip out the magnesium and calcium, and 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 make it so there's it, it cannot be broken. That there's a chemical bond that you don't have the the enzymes for. Oxalates do that as well. Binds things like calcium and magnesium, and um, and so you get these calcium stones, these calcium oxalate stones in your kidneys. You will not get calcium oxalate stones if you are not eating oxalates. You don't make oxalates. Eat you ox, not oxalates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. And so... That's um, all my problems could have been because I ate too many vegetables. Yeah, well, no, no. Ex- it is. Wow. Absolutely. And so, um, so again, with, with, the, with the gallstones, like if you eat enough fat, and again, enough fat as in the amount of fat that you have bile for, you physically cannot get gallstones. It's mm. not possible because you will never have any bile in your gallbladder in the first place. Yeah. So even if you're someone who makes will make it has a high susceptibility for getting gallstones and will get them really, really fast, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because you don't have any bile in your gallbladder. It will never be there long enough to form a stone. So that's what I think about as enough fat. You need to saturate your body's ability to absorb fat. People say, well, you don't want to overeat fat. And I'm like, no, no, that's still in the old thinking when we're thinking fat's bad and all these sorts of things. First of all, physiologically, you really can't overeat fat because you can't absorb it, right? There's an overflow valve. You can eat a bucket of lard. You'll absorb as much as you have fat for, small percentage of the rest of it. The rest will come out very dramatically. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> you know? And you know, this is yeah, like, this okay. is, you know, and this is like, you know, the saying is old saying, it's not really used anymore, but it's like, it's like quicker than fat through a goose. You, know? <laughs> you give a chunk of fat to a goose, it shits it right out. You know? Who was doing those experiments? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Errol Flynn. Oh, really? That was yeah. actually a guy. So, wow. so no, there's a, he's a movie star. He was a very, very famous movie yeah, star yeah. back in like the 40s and 50s. I remember the name, like yeah. Errol Flynn. Yeah, he was like a like an acrobat and things like that. So he'd do these big, cool sort of things, especially back then. They didn't have special effects. He's actually doing these, like yeah. swinging over and like doing backflips and all this stuff. Was sort he Tarzan? Cool uh, I don't Robin know if he was. Robin Hood. Robin, Robin Hood, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He did a lot. He was a big movie star. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't, know if, I don't, I don't think he ever played. I don't know if he played um, Tarzan, but you know, but he was in that era of yeah. the original sort of Tarzan movies, yeah. things like that. And a um, uh, very famous guy. And uh, there's a story about him, like when he was a kid, like on his like farm or something like that, or his uncle's farm. And uh, and he took a piece of suet, you know, like fat, and he sort of tied a piece of string into it, and he gave it to like a goose. And it just like, it just yummed it up, just shit it right out. And so now the string <laughs> is going through this goose. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so put it on a string, he just ate it with the string. <laughs> and so, and then he like took that piece of lard, and because it just kind of came out basically right. whole, yeah. right? And he gave that to another goose. <laughs> <laughs> and like another one, another one. So like after like, he spent the whole day doing this, he had like the string of geese. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? So that's <laughs> how Errol Flynn created string theory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What? So he had all curses connected. By so that's how quickly it. That's yeah. how quickly it goes through. Like fat through a goose. Duck, duck, goose is yeah. a whole new game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so that's the thing. You know, it, it, you, you really can't overeat fat. I wonder if right? that's what happened to my ram. It, same thing, but with barbed wire. Oh Jesus! On my farm, my ram had barbed wire coming out of its ass, and we had to pull Good it out. Lord. Man. I, so I think you've said that. I think you've said yeah. that before. Yeah. I don't know how it got there. It might have ate, eaten some mm. fat, but. Someone was being an asshole. Yeah. Pardon so. the pun. So, yeah. yeah, fuck, I'm converted. You'd Mate. be a great cult leader. I, <laughs> <laughs> I could, <laughs> we, could keep, we could keep talking for Honestly. hours. You have to go to physio, I know. Yeah. And, um, I've got a few for my back, I'm just going to go to the butcher. Yeah. That's right. my new physio. <laughs> yeah. um, Mate, thank you so much fuck for coming man. on. I, awesome. I want to get you back on and make talk about the neuroscience stuff. And, and yeah. Ancient yeah. Rome. Um, yeah, I've ancient really Rome. enjoyed it and really appreciate your time. It's my favorite. Yeah, Even, uh, yeah I've, you've basically almost converted me to definitely, I'm definitely try, trying yeah, I it. Do. Converted you, me to Isham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything you want to plug or anything, uh, any sort of handles or anything? Well, yeah. I, I just would say do give it a try mm-hmm. and just give it 30 days. After about two weeks, you'll get most of the crap out of your system. Yep. Alcohol takes about three weeks. Um, <laughs> 
and uh, but you're already two weeks into it. Yeah, you know, so I you're, got three weeks against the guy. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So so after next week, most of that's going to be out of your system, and you, you get get rid of the plants. It'll take two weeks or so. You will literally feel like a different breed of human. Yeah. You know, I don't feel good or really good or a lot better. I feel a thousand times better than I've ever felt in my entire life, as compared to myself as a professional athlete training ten hours a day. Yeah, wow. You know. And so this is this is night and day difference. And in a lot of ways, you will be a different breed of human because your body will be working in ways that are entirely different to almost everybody else on Earth. And you will not want to go back. So after two weeks, you'll just feel unreal. And then for the next two weeks of that 30 day trial period, you'll just you'll literally feel like a superhero. And you're like, I don't want this to go away. And when you trial things back, just like you were saying about Jordan Peterson, you're 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 a you're going to see the contrast. Because mm. we've just gone through life just feeling like low grade crap, and that like, and that's normal, right? Mm. So we call that normal, and we judge how we feel every day based on that average normal. Now you're going to feel superhuman. You yeah. normal is awful, and you're going to look back on your life and realize that you felt like shit every day of your life up until now. Amen, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I and feel he, like that's how vegans feel when they turn vegan. <laughs> like yeah. uh, we're superhuman, we're better than you, so we're going to go. But even that, that super would be, functional. That human. would definitely be the the reading of. You know, most of the processed yeah. foods yeah. and stuff like that, that, that initial good feeling that a vegan feels. Yeah. But it, yeah. then again, again, but it'll keep getting better. Yeah. yeah. Because there are toxins in lettuce, mm. you know, and all, all the things that the vegans are eating are yeah. still low grade toxins. Mm. Some of them are high grade toxins. I mean, some of these are worse than others, you know. And so um, uh, you're going to get all of that out and you're going to be giving your body perfect nutrition and you're going to feel unreal. And you're going to look back on your life and realize, like, you know, that you're that you wish you'd felt like this your whole life. And so after that 30 days, I can guarantee you that it's going to be, you're going to be very hard pressed to go back to eating any other way because you're just going to love how you feel so much. And you go back and eat that stuff. You're not going to be as used to it. It's going to hit you harder. You're going to bring you down from perfect. It's going to bring you from, you know, from, you know, paradise lost and be like, Oh my God, no, I want back. There. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and you're going to, you're, you're, you're going to see exactly what it is. So I, I just give it 30 days, and I think that, that you'll be uh, absolutely sold on it. I don't think there's I, – I have yet to meet someone who hasn't said, I, I feel amazing. Some people do go back. Alcohol is a big one. Yeah. You know, I, I know I have friends of mine that are like, do it for several months. I'm like, I've never felt better. I felt so good. But I just, you know, I, I wanted to drink. And as soon as they, they start drinking, they're like – it lowers their inhibitions for eating other crap. And they start eating, oh, well, you know, if I did this, then I might as well just eat a whole bunch of normal bullshit. No, of course not. You know, just having a drink every now and then or several drinks or a lot of drinks mm. every now and then is better than having mm. some drinks all the time yeah. Yeah. and eating a whole bunch of crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and so when I drink, it's maybe once every two years because it actually takes three damn weeks until I start feeling like a superhuman again. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, like a lot of things, not a lot of things, you know, uh, are worth that. Yeah. Are worth me losing a month yeah. of my optimal health. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, I just naturally don't, and you know, I go, I, you know, I never drank during the rugby season anyway, so that was yeah. a lot easier for me. That's and another thing we didn't even chat about, the professional yeah. rugby stuff. That's awesome. That's another thing yeah. we've got to get you on yeah. about. But well, if people want to listen to you more, do you, you've got your own pod? Yeah, so, yeah. so I've got, I've got a podcast and YouTube channel. Yep. Uh, the podcast is, I, I think, not going to surprise anyone, it's the Plant Free MD. The Plant Free yeah. MD. <laughs> and, nice. uh, and, uh. Uh, and then my YouTube channel is just my name, just Anthony Chafee MD, and I have, a, I have an Instagram and other you know, and and uh, by the same name, Anthony Chafee MD, and Twitter, Anthony underscore Chafee, and but everything can be sort of found through those. I have, right. have those contacts. Those are the main ones. I put out my videos on on YouTube, and I, I my podcast on any any podcast uh, platform. Station, yeah, yeah. So cool. I'm doing a new channel called the Plant MDMA. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, Quick plug, if anyone wants to come see The Confession with me and Cam, confessional, 9.30, Friday, Saturday, solo shows, uh, 7 and 8 o'clock, Thursday through to Sunday. Daniel Delby on fringeworld.com. I'll give you some free tickets if you want yeah. to come to a show. Yeah, that'd be cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm on at Convenience the next three Saturdays. Uh, February 11th, actually, I'm on three times. Don't come to all three because I'm saying the same, same jokes. Thing, <laughs> 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 three times. <laughs> but uh, I'm on three shows on the February the 11th, so that'll be one if you want to get out there. Uh, it's 6 o'clock, I think 9 o'clock and 10.30. So. Yeah. But aside from that... Yeah, uh, fuck! That was incredible. Awesome. You've converted the unconvertible. Yeah, so I'm I'm definitely getting involved yeah. and having a definitely a trial month. Well, yeah. When well, do you want to try it, Delby? 
I'm starting today. Today? There you yeah. go. Yeah, I might wait till February 1st, yeah. which is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you strike while, they're, strike while the iron's hot. It's always the way, you know, people say, oh, well, I just want to finish what's in my cupboard and all that sort of crap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. End up buying more I'm things literally going to pick those. up a food shop now. I've got, <laughs> so. chick- I've got chickens in the back, so I've got oh, free eggs, so happy days. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 All right. So, guys, thanks for listening. We're going to do the pre-roll now, so you're going to hear <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh,